Hey everybody, it's Michi with a quick show note. Please note, this episode contains subjects which may be disturbing or triggering to some individuals. Content warning for large age gaps between characters and relationships and mentions of suicide. Eternal Mooncast does not condone or endorse either of these subjects, though they are heavily mentioned in the original source material. We fully acknowledge that the source material deals with themes and subjects that are problematic. We are testing out, trying out a video style for the episode, so we hope that you like this. We wanted to upload it to YouTube because we thought it was really important with the timing of Sailor Moon Cosmos coming out that we try to do our Moonies justice and help them learn about characters they might not know. So if you like this, please let us know in the comments. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Eternal Mooncast, the streaming show all about Sailor Moon fan theory. We cover everything from the prominent to the obscure in the Mooniverse. I'm your host, Michi, with my co-host, Celine, and joining us tonight is our special Lucero. Thank you for joining us. Lucero is an indigenous craftsmanship cosplayer with a love for retro anime and details in her cosplays. Projects that let her relive her childhood nostalgia are her favorite, especially when they allow her to meet new friends who feel the same way. Welcome, Lucero. Hi, thank you so much for having me. No, thank you for joining us tonight, and we are so excited. And before we start... As always, guys, we have a quick Mooney disclaimer. We'd like to remind everyone that these are just our personal opinions. We do not have any, we do not in any way represent Toei or the Sailor Moon intellectual property. We invite you to join us tonight as we are live. Come into the discussions. We freaking love it. And tonight we delve into Left Out of the Adaptation, the missing and special characters of the Sailor Moon franchise. All right. Which I am so glad that you picked this topic because this topic, I feel like, is so interesting, especially for the time that we're doing this episode right before Sailor Moon Cosmos comes out. Yeah, one could see the stars really aligned for this one. <laughs> I love a good, good dad joke. I enjoy I it. it. Thank you for taking the dad joke. <laughs> you know what? We real I realized we didn't put on our list, and I just saw it. What? Phobos and Demos. Sh- the crows. We forgot the crows. There's a lot of twins. I was looking at it, and I was like, you know who's not there? Phobos and Demos. You know what? We'll try to get to them if we get time because manga, there's so many characters that we could go over. There's so many because I just thought of another one. Oh no. The Sailor Fairies. Oh, and there, it's such a unique Big brain. Time. Humongous. I know. There's so many wrinkles on the brain. I was looking at this, I was like, wait. Well, shit. The fairy spirit yeah. guardian planet mini amalgamations. Yes. They're so important. Why can't we have them? I know. Let's get started. Okay. So first thing we want to talk about, because we're going to break this down by different types. So the first one I wanted to talk about was our anime original only ones. Because a lot of us are 90s babies or discovered Sailor Moon anime first. And I think one of the biggest standouts, which we've already touched on this, but I wanted to come back and really look at them as what is is so special about them and like how does Sailor Moon feel without them is Alan and Anne or how do you pronounce their names what are their Japanese names it's a play Uh, on alien I know I think it's like like ale 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 and and on ale and on that's it and I just think it's so interesting because I didn't realize growing up that they were only in the 90s anime as because I don't know about you guys, but they had an impact on me. I loved their entire series. I actually was shocked when I finally got, when they finally were coming out with the manga and you could actually get it on your hand. I was reading and I was like, wait, where's the Doom Tree arc? Yeah. Those Cardians, the Tarot, there was like a very, it was a weird jump between the whole crystal astrology theme of the first season. And then you had, mm-hmm. the, yeah, it was just a very interesting thing in the anime that we totally missed in the manga but it also thematically was so wildly different that it would have felt really disjointed had it been in the print Mm -hmm. it didn't fit it did not fit i will fully agree with you there like the tree of doom arc i like to think of as just a wild fever dream in sailor moon (laughs) but like some of the best villains those cardians were epic they were gorgeous yeah they were beautiful they weren't like 
like some of the shit like the the shoe monster <laughs> oh no not lady's foot locker don't come for her i love her it was no, a hard nine to five job and like the the elephant vacuum sexy vacuum cleaner will always be one of my top five i think they they were just very elegant monsters and i'm sad that we it didn't have a mo- i'd be interested to see it have a manga arc because it would have been so different like how she wrote it told the story but it's it still got the overall arch the arching theme for the whole thing where it's the power of love they at least kept that but i also think they did it in a really unique way because it was the because you have to admit that season while it is a little messy of a 12 episode arc i think isn't a 12 episode it's short. It's really short because I rewatched it and it was insanely short. Are you serious? It can't only be told. I felt like I watched like 20 episodes for that arc. No way. I rewatched I thought it. it was 26, but I'm just pulling that number out of the air. I could be completely wrong. That wouldn't surprise me. But it felt right in the moment. No, it, it's because we associate Sailor Moon with being so long because it mm-hmm. is a very long running show. But don't worry, Celine will double check me because I could be completely out in outer space. So, because like, well, you like, said that, I'm like, mm, I, no. Um, I'm trying to remember. And for those of you who are not sure who, let me pull up a picture. And Sailor, they are I'm also out. Oh, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm trying to remember how many Cardians they are to count the episodes. It's, I don't remember more than four, but there's definitely more than four. <laughs> I think everybody just remembers Alan's flute. Like, that is going to be, I think, the most iconic part of... To me, I don't know something about that tune. And I'm mad that they changed it. Because these are the characters we're talking about. So Alan in the blue and Anne in the pink, which those are the original deep dub names. I'm sorry, I tried to switch... I- it's childhood. It's so deeply rooted in my childhood. I can't switch it. There's 13. There's no. It's only 13 episodes. See, I told oh you. Because I rewatched it. Wow. It's a quick watch. It's like a Madoka Magica where you're like, oh, this is cute. Wait, what the heck is going on? And then all of a sudden everybody's dying. Yeah. It's only I mean, 13 episodes. Selena's in shock. <laughs> so I thought it was way more. Things. I'm flabbergasted. I thought it was at least like 20 episodes because I felt that that's what it was. The third, same. Because no. I mean, the last two episodes are literally the whole fight scene. But this also but really, we only get 11. This makes sense now, though, because of the whole like the R movie, The Promise of the Rose, is basically just that, in, that entire season just redone in like an hour and a half. So that makes sense now. They just took the best parts. I get it. It's the director's cut. Yeah, I thought it was longer. Dang. I love them. Like I said, it's my favorite arc, even though it's like, now that I know it's only 13 episodes, I'm like, shit. I I guess 13 times 30 minutes. To be fair, it also had some of the quippiest jokes in the deep dub. Yeah. Because, my God. Those jokes were awful. They were great. And they're fantastic to watch. I love them so much. And then I wish I had the deep dub because I went to go look at like, what I had and I don't. I have um, the original Japanese sub. And I'm so oh. sad I don't have the original deep episodes for that because come I, I would love for them to re-release just a deep episode like mm-hmm. collection. Like, give me that. I love those voice actors. <laughs> like, just. Oh, yeah, my gosh. Here I, I have perfect we played this but i it's very short it's a minute 50 before it is one of my favorite things to show it is a best of ann granger also known as on from sailor moon r the deep dub so let me just play this little masterpiece for you because it is one of my absolute favorites all right let me take out my headphones hey you want to go to that big laser disco after school it'll be laser disco I find disco's boring, actually. They're so last season. Of course, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a bad singer. Always home around the raid. Chris, you're supposed to be American. Prime school's crap the street. Supposed to me. My favorite Sailor Moon voice actress ever, hands Sailor down. Now, you should be rad. So, like, 
also the animation was really good during this arc yeah like the writers they're or their animators their paycheck was due or something like dang <laughs> but i just love this like what is your and read the first two lines out loud please at least he's shreddy oh my gosh i will i will that's probably enough of that but i just <laughs> want to live forever because i find her absolutely hysterical and that was from Zeta Rukuli, one on YouTube. Thank you for having that epic compliment, compliment of Anne. Because, I don't know, something about the original voice actor. She had so much snark. It's just Molly. Yeah. The original Molly, man. Like, Naru's original Deke voice actor. But I loved her so much. I can't. I sometimes can't watch, like, the new dubs because I'm just like, where's my British Luna? I want my little New York schoolgirl. We don't know why she's in Japan, but she's loving every minute of it. Exactly. But I honestly think, like, not having the Tree of Doom is a disservice to the redo of Sailor Moon, which I get it. We're following the manga, but also there were just some things that the anime did do better, and I would love to see a hybrid of the two. Why can't we get the best of both worlds in one Sailor Moon type? Hmm. Or, you know, redo like. Yeah, and that's one of the things that the 90s anime did so wildly different from, like, the printed comic is we got to actually see characters fleshed out and their perspectives in their everyday life, and, like, it was really built and expanded on with good pacing. And the Doom Tree arc was just like, oh, he's ever wondered what else happens in space when you're not a sailor senshi and there's other life forms and what they're going on and how the scouts would care about them here it is and it doesn't really happen in crystal and i'm not saying it's a problem but it's not great either oh you can shit on crystal like, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm not happy about it i'm, I'm like, like fully, i know you're gonna say it just go for it i will shit on crystal every single day now i'm hoping the cosmos movie like redeems it a little bit because eternal pissed me off because i wanted a season of the hellenia mm. They didn't give it to me. And they also missed a lot of key points in the manga for that arc. So Yeah, the movie. I was like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna and in case anyone's wondering, we are gonna end the episode talking about the Sailor Moon causes the movie. So it is coming. We just wanted to get all of our history out of the way first. Mm -hmm. But I just I don't know. There's something about this season. I would I just love it. I, I would have loved to see it redone with the new art. I think it would have I think it would have done very well or I feel that they just dropped it by the wayside even though it's actually a fan favorite like yeah. people love Alan and Anne it wasn't a badly done arc for being filler episodes you normally don't see that with filler episodes you don't see it where yes it's a little bit different but they made it work into the Sailor Moon universe where it it didn't feel completely disjointed. Where you get, look at Naruto with how many freaking filler episodes it has. And it's just out in bumfuck nowhere where I was like, what the, why should I care? Or Dragon Ball Z had the same thing. Thankfully with their new series, they just tightened it up a little bit. But like you have all these other series that do these like filler episodes and you're like, why did we need and then you have this where it's a filler arc and it did fantastic and held up on its own yep from start to finish and you were right what you were saying about pacing even those 13 episodes i didn't realize it was 13 episodes because the pacing was so good exactly yeah it truly felt more like a 26 episode season like you guys said no i don't i'm not making fun of you i like genuinely no i was like, like i ought to think even it's only 13 I'm like, mm. really? We got that much storyline in 13 episodes? That's insane. I just love it. But all right. Anything else on Alan and Anne before we continue on? They were arguably some of the most fashionable villains. I know that's a hot take considering how well everyone's dressed. But when you introduce a twin velvet skin tight gold element rhinestone space aliens with 80 rockers cuts, where could you go wrong? No, I mean, the self-edit, and uh, they had a great soundtrack too. And 
They were robbed in Crystal, truly. No, you know what? You are so right, because those designs are so unique, but they are perfection somehow. And they still fit into the Sailor Moon universe. Like, they, while they're, like, they feel outlandish, they're not. And that's, that's why I say Doomtree Arc deserved better. They did so well. Like, the fact that I thought, oh, that's part of the series, and then you read the manga, you're like, oh, wait. <laughs> you guys made that up on the fly? Shit, okay. Someone they liked was so eating their made the movie when they made the damn series. No, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Someone I said, I, I'm going to wake up in the morning, choose violence, and make this series. Rip out your hearts about these two people supposedly playing brother and sister, but they're actually not. They're actually in love. Why Sailor Moon? Why? They walked so that cousins could run, and here we are. Yeah, I'm dead. I love it. I'm oh, here for it. You know what? It's not as bad as Card Captor Sakura. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sailor Moon. What's her face? Rina? Rita? I don't know her Japanese name. I just know she was Rita in the English. All I know is the English dub probably did her the best, and I have her blocked from my mind until just this moment. And I'm getting more flashbacks, quite frankly. You're welcome. <laughs> And I then, want you in the trenches with me. Yeah, and I'm the, there with you. I love you too. <laughs> you two down there. Is, the thing that we didn't bring that we did bring up, but I that I did want to touch on briefly. Sailor Denzel said they were so good that they reused their designs for the R movie. The movies have a lot of unique one-off characters that we're not going to have time for tonight because I really wanted to focus on the manga since Sailor Moon Cosmos is coming up. But mm -hmm. you are right; it is. I was confused. I'm like, is that his twin brother that we didn't know about? And I don't know, but he had a naked lady and a flower, and I was hooked. The third survivor. Like, wow. Him. So. Yeah. There's a reason why they didn't mention him in the first arc. They don't really like his lifestyle, but they can't knock it either. He got a whole movie for it. And you know what? I like him. Like, I think that movie is genuinely a great movie. Like, it's not my favorite, but I genuinely just like, like, he's a good villain. He's an interesting villain that you can see where he's coming from because he got such horrible circumstances in life. Yes. All villains get horrible circumstances in life. They just decide to turn it on other people. Because if uh, I did that, I'd be arrested. So. Not if you've had a space flower sugar mama. But we can't That's all be so lucky, can we? I don't know if my wife would appreciate that. But... Oh, gosh, I'm but so sorry. But then I'd be like, hang on the bills. It's Makoto the start and stuff. To... <laughs> Haven't seen Senpai lately. Got a lot more time these days. Gotta go for the sugar mamas instead. They pay for more. Yeah, I've... Your Tinder's the place to be. Crystal Tokyo doesn't really have that. I'm checking it out. Checking it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, so let's move on. Briefly, I want to talk about the musical only anima mate because oh my god who lost a bet in the costuming department i want to know genuinely i and this is not a knock on the characters i love them they are something so the original musical only characters they oh my god i found a picture i found a video i'm so freaking happy it's, it's sailor pux and sailor titanium how do you pronounce it Karoko? Frog? Yeah. And basically, it's a titanium frog and a pewter fox. And their designs are wild. Like, there are very few pictures that exist because this musical happened back in 1996. So we're talking, like, way before we have a lot of video and stuff. So we are going to heavily it, it probably has a video, but someone's got that VHS sitting in the bottom of their mother's basement. <laughs> probably Mothman. And if that is you, please go down to your basement. We need the material, please. <laughs> Make sure the VHS doesn't have mold on it. Yeah, protect that with yourself. So the VHS does that. Did you know that? No. But if you're not careful, the VHS tape can grow like mold on it. I do. Like the actual that. tape itself. Yes. Didn't know that. Ask me how long. <laughs> I think because I that's how I found out. Yeah. You ever go to like, rewind them again with a pencil ruined. and you're like, it shouldn't be that color. It shouldn't be that texture. It's fuzzy. Well, that's a good Sailor Moon PSA for all of our fans out there. And by the way, these pictures are so tiny. I am trying to make them bigger, but it is impossible. So we are going I mean, to... It's probably because it was taken so 
far back from the stage. Yep. So remember, guys, this is the 90s. This is the days before we had Zooming on our cameras. <laughs> for fun. We had Zooming. It just, if it was a regular camera, it wasn't doing shit. <laughs> Fair. But, all right, so Sailor, Peter Fox, and yes, we are heavily relying on Wikimoon. Thank you, Wikimoon and uh, the fandom. Because we, you yeah, know what? When you have barely any stuff, that is when you have to really rely on the fans. So Sailor Pewter Fox was a Sarah Mew only character, and in the musical Sailor Moon Stars and its revisions acted as the leader of the San Il- as the Ugh. almost being <laughs> as the leader of the Sailor Anima mates. Sailor Pewter Fox and she had one primary attack, but she had a ton of metric solos. And she was apparently like she was the lead crow of the universe because they did not I believe they either didn't have her or they switched her they probably couldn't do the wings I think they swapped her out because that was like that was the subgroup under Sailor Buttress who then served Galaxia who then had like other unless I'm getting my musicals wrong but there was like I think Sailor Bugs that were also part of Galaxia's higher echelon in that one there's like a Sailor Praying Mantis or something and like a sailor bee? What? Oh my I god. Only I only them there was an actual people on stage in the costumes. I can't. It's been so long since I watched the full musical. It's been a while. I oh, I know for sure they're talked about. If we are seeing them, I think they're in like civilian disguises. Sailor Buttress, Dark Galaxia, whatever that was, you definitely see her like I'm jumping in between. I got it. I got it for you. So I found a YouTube video with a compilation and it actually, thank you, Ricky Riddle for this, actually lists everybody out. So there is a Sailor Buttress, which I think was the difference for Sailor Heavy Metal Papillon. I think she's actually Shadow Galaxia before she becomes, like in the anime, she was just the same as Galaxia, but in black. Really? Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. You know what? You, you, I think you're right. So they weren't, sh- they weren't Sailor Scouts, they were Shadows. So yeah. Shadow Mantle, Shadow Bee, and Shadow Bug. There we go. And MC Fly. Yes, yes, he was like inverted tuxedo mask. What? But like okay. way uglier. Okay, we gotta watch this now. I'm so here for this. Okay, let's see what the heck is going on. I love how hard the villains always go in the Sailor me things. Sailor Pewter Fox ate and left no crumbs. And I think there's also like... That's interesting. They're naming like constellation areas. I just think it's so interesting because they play them so seriously with such hilarious designs. I'll just let this play a little bit in the background while we... Why is the speed so slow? But it's this... I think that they're interesting because they are played for... Oh, I love this. By the way, if you love Galaxia, this is one of the best versions of Galaxia ever. There's Sailor Frog. I love her, honestly, in a little bit, but... I'm they guessing that so... was the bug. Like, I just think the anima mates are a really interesting set. I'm very excited, but I also am so curious. Like, you had so many designs for the anima mates in the manga. Why did you feel the need to create two more? That is a really good question. They may have just not wanted to do the other ones, but they needed more characters. That's a fair point. Because I don't see Alum- Aluminum Siren in that musical, which could have been because of that whole face thing. Also, I'm wondering if they didn't do the Lead Crow and Aluminum Siren because of how sexy their outfits are. Oh, that's true. Because they were able and to. And Heavy Metal down. Papillon? Definitely not because she's in a, a bikini. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I'm wondering if because of how sexy those they happen to be dressed, because like Tin Cat has a full thing. It's a sa- it's it covers as much as a Sailor Senshi mm-hmm. outfit. And so does Mouse. Yeah. So yeah, so she's wearing like because, a teddy. I'm wondering because the other two are like very sexy mm-hmm. they didn't and i guess they didn't want to put lead crow without aluminum siren because that wouldn't be right those two desserts like they go they, hand in hand they go together mm-hmm. 
but I can see that and I can see why they wouldn't have done some of the other characters we're going to talk about the other anima mates because they're such they're not as they're not as seen they're only seen in the final battle really yeah and with musicals I'm guessing that's the bug right there yeah that should be or fly fly. or whatever he's supposed to be oh he's just inverted tuxedo mask and is he going up against actual tuxedo mask yes for dominance why am I here? And that's a male tuxedo mask. It is. Yeah. In Holy 19... crap. In 1996, it was a male actor. That means that man could sing. Yep. Sure. And it better, he barely had any singing in this musical, and they were like, it's fine. I just, I, I like the designs, though. Because look at the beautiful gold detailing on the cape. Like, that is moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did not hold back. They wanted this big and glamorous. Uh, our lights. But they'll do the starlights on stage, and I was like, they're half covered. Yeah, so it doesn't. You know, but they're also mean. I think Sorry. also for a lot of the musicals, because they are their own canons. Like, I'm, yeah, that could be a whole other episode on just the musical <laughs> characters. But they make up a lot of them just to progress the plot, and they have very short backstories that are like, why are we all singing? Why is there? Why are we all idols in this musical? Oh, it's because our planet's really sad and these two characters have the same personality and they're together and we don't have to worry about them kind of being in love. And but It's a frog and a fox. What do you want? And to be fair, Sailor Pewter Fox, I actually really like. like I'm genuinely, mm-hmm. if they introduced her into the anime, I would be like, you know what? Fair. You created a great character. I will deal. Cause she, since she's the leader, because I feel like Sailor Leg Crow, it didn't come across as much that she was the leader of the Sailor anime mates. I honestly didn't realize it until I was researching that she, that it was a thing. So because she doesn't act like it, you no. Know, like e- in either of the in the anime, the manga, she didn't really feel like a leader either. No, not at all. And it's not a knock on her character because definitely yeah. her character is absolutely amazing, but it's just it just feels different. Okay, so that's about the end of the clip, but. Yeah, highly recommend if you guys are a fan of Sailor Moon and would love to see maybe a different version of Stars. The 1996 musical is honestly one of the great ones. It's so funny. Also, the recent one with Galaxia was pretty good yeah. from the clips I've seen. I, I love the chibi chibi that they got. The wigs have only pretty, gotten pretty better. Cute. It's like insane. Which, which, like, how are they doing that? Because those are kids wearing wigs, and they're such big wigs. It's mm-hmm. probably more a helmet at that point. I was, I mean, <laughs> it's just, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's probably more a hair helmet. I keep wondering, honestly, for the more top-heavy ones, if there's, like, a hidden strap somewhere, because you have that whole, like, stage distance. Mm-hmm. If it's a new fabric, you can't see it. And they do a lot of twirls. They do a lot of twirls. I'm surprised there has not been that That thing is cemented yet. to their head. Yeah. It's not going nowhere. No. You could try to nuclear blast that off their head and still be there. Like their body would be gone, but their head would still be attached to that wig. <laughs> yeah. Whoever they were, like they found somebody who looked at Sailor Moon's designs and was like, bet I can do this. That's the wig that fought with a hairdryer and won. Yeah. Yes. Anyone we're aware of so far? Yeah. It, it's the Sailor Moon musical franchise. They win. <laughs> Oh my gosh! But Ari, right, anything else that you guys want to talk about with with the musicals? Because I know Celine isn't a huge musical person, but I just haven't seen them because I don't have my hands on them. That's all. Yeah, and no, trust me. And when we get together, that'll change because <laughs> I can't wait to watch them with you. But yeah, I just don't watch them because a lot of times I can't find them subtitled, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I can't enjoy this because I I got some phrases. Like, I know some because I've watched so much, sh- so many things, but then I don't know exactly everything they're saying. I'll be like, oh, they said, hello, how are you? And they said, my day is good. That's it. <laughs> yeah, totally get it. You need- yeah, they get- if you guys are ever looking for them, I highly recommend Miss Dream, who is a Sailor Moon. I would call her more of a historian at this point. Right, they are available to watch, and that is where I watched them initially, and they are just absolutely awesome. I might mm-hmm. do that when I'm bored. For good <laughs> one, yeah. And in case you're ever looking, it, it 
this is what it looks like. And it, and the title is Miss Dream, a Sailor Moon translation project. And I got to work with them a little bit. And just in general, like right here is the final, the little movement final. I will never get that. But highly recommend. We love to support other Moonies. Yeah, they're an amazing archival site. That's like a lot of stuff for what they've, tr the Dojin section. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But that section is amazing. I've been there. I looked at it and I was like, that's why I got some home. He's on that webpage. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I can't say much because I actually purchased some from them. Oh my gosh, you're very jealous. Yeah, so, but I don't know. not a Dojin that's like out there for Sailor Moon is actually insane. It's great. Yeah. You could get lost for like at least four hours going down like Mandarake's website just in their doujin section. That's a big order, but it really fills a hole in my heart. <laughs> Try to see if I have. Okay. I read too much fan fiction to, to subject myself to that. So, for example, this is one. It's very pretty. Yeah. I, I, I was trying to part concept of doujin like in Japan because they don't get in trouble. We're here. God forbid you draw Mickey or Tinkerbell. Winnie the Pooh is now free. I think he I think has to be shirtless, though. Really? Yeah, the it's the Winnie the Pooh with the red shirt is like the Disney IP and just the nude original bear all to the world. He can be yours. You can mess with him. Uh, I think Winnie the Pooh is actually, they lost the, uh, it went into uh, public domain, which is why that oh, horror movie is coming out. I say, oh, what? Yeah, I forget what it's called, but there's a horror movie coming out, and it's Winnie the Pooh. I just look at it, low but Pooh. I think he hit public domain. But I, like I said, I find it interesting because the way Japan does that kind of stuff, I know you can only print a certain amount for mm -hmm. those doujin. They can print a certain amount, but they can just go and make another one. Like, it's insane. I always find it interesting. Like, they, they welcome fan art. And stuff like that. But then here they're like, no, don't do that. And I'm like, you know what? We make makes your stuff sell more because we did pretty art of it. So thank y'all. We managed to move right along today. So do you guys just want to get into the manga? And because we have so many characters that we didn't even list out that we can just keep going until. <laughs> uh, I mean, we can do like the manga section because like I said, Phobo, Phobos and Demos were not. Let's just start there. Let's talk about those two. I'll bring up a picture. So Phobos and Deimos. Celine, would you mind introducing them? They are actually from the moons of Mars. They are, they're supposed to be Princess Mars's guardians. Um, and the manga, they actually appear several times in the manga. Yes. They appear as crows for the most part. But a little bit later, they do actually reveal their little human forms. And they're super cute. They're the little fairies like the fairy form i found it interesting how many like fairy things she would do for characters but yeah phobos and demos are the moons of mars and they are they help mars warn her because she'll notice that they're like being disturbed and stuff like that and she's like <laughs> oh hold on one second yeah and there's this beautiful uh breakdown about sailor moon mythology with phobos and demos on tumblr yes i still use mm -hmm. tumblr at Magical Girl Musings. So I highly recommend if you're looking for more info, but please continue, Celine. So it was really sad. Like you have the crow, you do have the crows in the anime, but there's never any like extras on them. Just Mars has her crows. I don't even think she she gives their names in the 90s anime. She does Zing Crystal. She does yeah. Zing Crystal. Not yeah, in the 90s. Crystal from supposed to be going on the manga. <laughs> so but I'm talking like 90s. I think she maybe said Phobos once. I think she only named one of them. I think she said Phobos for one of them. They actually had the names of the crows, but they didn't do anything with them. So they didn't explain why they were there, what they, why did Mars communicate with them, why they were at the shrine. Mm -hmm. No. So you lose like these characters that are actually, they have several parts that they show up in, in the manga where they come and they talk to Mars, and they're essentially, like, her best friend. Like, she loves those crows. Yeah. Oh, because in every big image, here we go, I found it. This was the one I was thinking of. Mm. When she's really lonely. 
she's shown only with these two. But they don't give them any names. And like you always see these two crows with Mars. These are her, be- they are her best friends. Because mm-hmm. she is supposed to be a very lonely character. Like she keeps to herself. She's being the shrine maiden because you never hear about her having friends at school. The scouts are her only friends. Yeah. And then you have these two and then you didn't really, they didn't really, they had the crows, but they didn't explain the crows. Yeah. So it was sad. I was like, they're good beings. Why don't you have them? Yeah. Cause they actually do things, don't they? They, they talk to her. So they give her warnings and stuff like that. So it's like the pocket rocks with a tuxedo mask. Yeah. Okay. Ex- except <laughs> she gets to pet crow, which is fucking. Weird. Sorry, I call the pocket rock. The four generals. No, it oh. took me half a second. The gears were turning. And I was like, oh, no. He can use the pocket rock as a weapon and then he's fighting with his friends. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, and as Loki said, per- she's perceived as popular at school. However, that doesn't mean she had friends, which it's true, especially I think back to that episode where she's running the school festival and she's doing everything by herself. Everybody is so looking up to her and been like, oh, my God, Miss Ray is amazing. And then you find out she's actually ready to have a breakdown and is just doing everything solo and is alone. In the manga, the, it was because her father's a politician. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the anime they no. just kind of made it like she was the school idol. And everyone thought she was just so competent. She could handle all these things. It's like, dude, she's like 14, 15, cut her some flag. Administrative work at this age? Right? Please. You don't pay me enough. No. I just enough. realized now that we're talking about Mars, a lot of people who surround Mars are not in things. Her dad, first of all, was never in the 90s. 90s no, anime. Ever. The dad's assistant, who is her love interest, is not in the anime. Is not in Crystal. Are we going there, Celine? Are we going? Yes. Our right, right. interest, this older ass man who is like next in line to be this, poli- like take over her dad's politician thing is mm-hmm. not there. I mean, they, there is a scene in the manga where she actually kisses him mm-hmm. and like, he's not in there. He also was not in Crystal. Probably because he was a much older man, but like he grew there's scenes of them like her growing up with him it's great it's entirely great. and she was like if you weren't doing this we'd be married and i'm like it's like the That's little mermaid where i'm like you're 16 sit down oh but i used to think that way too when i was that age like i can't even say shit i was like um i'm the same way i thought i was growing up and i'm like bitch sit down you're not that's me today but <laughs> I can't say how old I am because we shouldn't be talking ages, but I still feel that way. Yep. And I was in middle school when Sailor Moon hit networks. So that says something about my age. And I'm like, man, I don't want an adult today. I don't want an adult. No, but Ray has, you're right. Ray is surrounded by characters that they completely took away from her in other adaptations, which is so freaking sad. Because her story is completely sad, which you all know who I blame for that. Queen Serenity, cough, cough. But I think that they were, I think that genuinely, like, Mars is a sad circumstance because all of the, like, Phobos and Deimos, they were in the Dark Kingdom arc, they were in the Dream arc, and they were in the Stars arc. Why did we not get any of them at any point? Like I said, you just get the crows, but there's no, they're, they make them out to just be birds. Yeah. And I'm like, no, those are her best friends. And doesn't the don't they tie into Sailor Lead Crow? Aren't they from her home planet? Yes. Mm-hmm. Or at least I'm really sure. This is gonna be another twenty six episode thing. I'm agreeing before I know all the fun. Don't worry. Let's see. I think she says something about them. Hold I think they are because it's just like Tinyanko also being from the planet Mao with Luna and Artemis. That's when they were like Every that's where I was. Sure. Yep, okay, yeah. Loki and Gig for Perms. Yep, same place. I'm glad yeah, someone see- in here is fact chicken. Thank y'all. That's our <laughs> that's, that's my wife husband for you. And that's our producer. I love that. Where were you yep. when I was at 26 episodes? I needed to be friends with her. My wife was working. Yeah, so I was not- I have the brain cell today. You do. Loki is in mm-hmm. charge of the brain cell. 
Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, le- you're right. Lead Crow does say something in the manga. Now that you said that, I was like, yes, because Tin Cat says something to Lunar and Artemis. We're a bunch of goofballs yeah. on this channel. I hope you know. <laughs> I'm. Yeah. Oh, planet. Yeah. Coronet. Yeah. I will put that up on the screen. Thank you, Sailor Denzel. I so- love your screen name so much. The raw power behind that. That is a great name. Oh, but I think it's a, it's just so interesting to me because I feel like they could have changed the storyline if you had included them. You know what I mean? Because Mars in the 90s gets unfairly really bitchy. Like, I think that's why they really, they, in the 90s adaptation, I mean, it just seemed like they were trying to make everybody else an accessory to Sailor Moon and they made her seem way more overpowered and they stripped them of like the elements that made them so special in the manga, which did give them more room to personalize them and show how they are in their civilian forms. But look at what cost, honestly. I don't want to see Ray being like the friend you can't trust with the guy you like in the same room and then you just don't talk about what is that about? That is not I, good. We had an episode on this where I oh. complained about this, about the 90s anime, how the manga is all about friendship and ha- the power of friendship. Yes, My Little Pony. Um, <laughs> but it was the power of friendship and the girls don't ever fight like that in the manga. And I feel that the 90s anime brought it in like a lot of shows do where they make girls the girls cat fight mm. problem is you show young impressionable women that is how they're going to act in the school setting and that's how they define a friendship they're like my boundaries mm-hmm. can be whatever i'll take whatever because that's what i aspired with this friend group and that's just the give and take you have the one friend who wants to kill you but someday she doesn't but at least you're all cute I'm that friend. What? Where I look at my entire friend group, I'm like, I'm going to choke all of you out, but I love you. (laughs) Hi, Queen (laughs) Helena. But the courtesy is you're open about it. You gave them a heads up. If they're not expecting it at that point, that's one that. (laughs) I'm a Capricorn. I will judge you. Openly tell you to your face, but I still love you and will buy you cake. I'm a Taurus. I keep everybody grounded. I'm, I think, also a Capricorn. I'm like, on the day where some places are like, you're an Aquarius, you're a Capricorn. But uh, for argument's sake, let's just say an Earth sign. Okay. Hey. I'm December 31st. So. Yeah. I'm Which like, is I'm cool. like right smack dab in the middle of Capricorn. They're like, you're a Capricorn. I'm like. Yeah, but I'm May 3rd. So I am like dead center of Taurus season. So I think that's why we get along so <laughs> Which is surprising because my brother is May 2nd and I have never wanted to throw someone in traffic so bad. I'm on inauguration day, so we're four years and either happily surprised or very disappointed. All right, back to Sailor Moon. Back to Sailor Moon. We're going to get it for me. But if anything else about uh, Phobos and Davis that we wanted to talk about. And Loki, I agree you are. Hello, Libra. Pointing out everybody around Mars because Mars has. Was Chad in the manga? No, I no. I'm pretty sure he was '90s anime exclusive. I love Chad. Chad, Chad for like Stan Chad. Chad was great. Let me see. He was also an interesting transplant. We had Molly from New York and Chad, arguably from Venice Beach. Chad is the biggest gift. Like (laughs) he was just the he was just like yes. I loved his fight with Haruka and how she does this. What's wrong with you? Why are you acting like this? Are you okay? Yeah, he oh, isn't oh anime God. only. That's good. I loved him. Mm-hmm. And he loved Ray. His love for Ray was so pure and so genuine. Oh, yeah, he, he is deserved only, a lot better. He is <laughs> only in the anime. And I think that was to maybe balance out the whole man fight with Tuxedo Mask. To give her a wholesome man who worships the ground that she walks on, the goddess she fucking is. Yep. Because Mars was wearing heels when she didn't need to be. Red high heels. Maybe that was why he. You see him in the background a lot once he shows up, but he disappears after when we start getting into S. Mm. He disappears once once Chibiusa shows up. We really don't see Chad anymore. 
But now here's the question, the elephant in the room, the Chad outside of the beach, if you will. His age. <laughs> a man traveling like that with only a bag on his back. We're talking about older men here. We saw what they did with Darian. He, they gave us enough information to be like, yeah, this is a cool, well-meaning guy. Who, but at the same time, not enough to be like, who really is Chad? I think Why? he's supposed to be like 18 or 19. I forgot. And that's a little suspicious. How old is Rose supposed to be? That's all. Bam. Yeah, let's swear. I just think I'm like, wait a minute. I never even thought about his age. I'm like, I always just shipped them because it was cute. And I'm like, wait a minute. How old is Bam he? was the replacement for her dad's assistant. Yeah. But I'm wondering. You know what's fun? Okay. So the character is in the series. Still around Mars. Ready? The way Grandpa looks. His grandpa is a hot young man with a mustache in the manga. Yeah. And then yes. in the anime, he's this perverted little old bald guy who represents the one tr sensei from freaking Ranma half. He went through the $5 budget version, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he went from this to this. Yeah. Yeah. He's supposed to be a handsome guy. What happened? Oh, they show him. Wait, the one, the picture right next to it, next to that manga one. Up. Uh, yeah, he's supposed to be a. Young looking, go that colored picture there, oh, right one? there. Yeah, wow. so that's what he looked like in the crystal. So crystal actually made him look like it. But the, in the nineties, they made him this short little fat bald man. Yeah, when he's supposed to be like this really gorgeous like daddy. Oh my god, what a of a shrine shrine like runner. Yeah, he's supposed to be very handsome. That is wildly different. So he was yeah, played for laughs more. Sorry. Yeah, he was supposed to be. Oh, no. I'm wondering and they if gave it's us because. Yeah, because of the media difference and like the intended age of viewership over readership. I'm wondering if they wanted to make him more comedic relief to be like palatable to a younger audience instead of making it like a high drama with. Are you sure that's your grandpa? <laughs> Man, you guys in the comments section, everybody is going. For that. <laughs> This King Triton of the Sailor Moon universe. It's true. Oh, it is true. I, I agree. Daddy. I can't play it. Can't argue. Look, because Sailor Moon really said age is just the number. Which is not. We are not here for that. That is not something we support on the show. A lot of manga's like that. Like, we can't. What? Rini's Tokyo Mew Mew does. 800, 900, 1,000. She's just, at There's least some, over 900. Uh, some choices were made here that were a little questionable. Yeah, so trust me, we all look at this with a, we know that this has problematic past. We know that. Mm -hmm. So know that we are not excusing it. We are not like, just a, but it is a product. Celine, will you be the more, I can't words tonight. We're not supporting it, but like, what are you going to do? It happens in pretty much all manga. What's funny is it happens in real life. They're not wrong. But we do not, but we, but we but don't we, support it. Yeah, we do not support it. It's the big thing. I okay. Know. Yeah. I was such a bad teenager. I, I was a goody two shoes. <laughs> no. Nope. All right. Any other character around Ray that we want to talk about? I think that's everyone for her. Yeah. Cause I can't remember anybody. Cause Mercury's mom. Do we see Mercury's mom? Yes. Like an actual, yeah. she actually shows up in the anime for the 90s. She shows up, I believe. Let me double check. Mer I think for a second, like, you actually see her. Is she in the OVA, Amy's First Love? Because that might be the only thing I can, I could be so off the mark. I could be off too. Mm -hmm. There's one character for Amy that they don't show in the manga, and that's her dad. But they showed her, showed him in the anime as a traveling painter. Was her romance interest? Oh, wow. I keep that. Had a stroke. Was her romance interest also in the uh, manga? Or am I like totally blacking him out? Was he only the 90s anime? Only 90s anime. What is it? You know what? I think it, it's because I'm re-watching Crystal and rereading the manga that I mixed it up. You are right. It is only in Crystal that we got to see Ami's parents and the okay. manga. You were They do. You don't see the images of them. But she does mention them at least. Yeah. Like, she does talk about them at least. But we don't see them. Yeah. 
trying to think who else. Jupiter. I don't. They don't really have anybody that they didn't show. Too many senpais. Yeah. We, yeah. Do we even know what the original one looked like at this point? Does she even yeah. know? Do I even? Know? No, you don't. It's always just like a blurred out like image of like a shadow. Yeah. And then me not. Oh gosh, not that I recall. Ace, Ace, Ace. But Ace, the thing Ace. is, that he wasn't in the actual Sailor Moon manga. He was in Sailor V manga. So that's different. She you never got me mentions totally Ace. Brain fart. Yeah, no. She never mentions Ace in the actual manga. See, and I uh. always your Sailor V is part of it. But you're right. You're a hundred percent right that technically yeah. he never yeah. gets brought over, which is such a sad because Sailor V manga is epic. You know what I like them to announce. When they finish Cosmos, that they're actually going to make Sailor V an anime or do a movie. To give us a movie, please. Two movies. That's all we want right there. At least. Give us 12 episodes. Like, we yeah. don't even care. I just, I, I want to see him animated. I want to see the whole, like, the card attacks. Mm -hmm. I, God, you talk about messy senpai relationships. Mina has had it so bad for so long. That's <laughs> true. And thank you, Loki, for that awesome PSA. All right. Mm -hmm. So why don't we continue on? Because now we're going to... Is there any in the earlier parts of the manga before we get the stars? That because That's the thing. Technically, Eternal Movies turned a bunch of characters that were manga only into now they are mm -hmm. in the Sailor Moon universe in the anime. Because we got human Artemis. We got human Luna. We got human Diana. We got the... Mm -hmm. To look alike with the the bun, the like Queen Serenity, like clones. Like I said, the fairies, mm -hmm. the fairies were not in the original 90s. In case anybody's wondering, who was, the fairies are essentially the scouts, the soul of the scouts of the planet. That's what they represent is because all the girls are princesses. The fairies oh. represent the scout part of the planet. And they all have these cute little sailor fairies and they're super cute. I actually would love like a statue with all the fairies just flying around. That would be so cute. But they're literally just like little miniatures of the scouts. And they're like the soul of the scout that kind of says, you can do it. It's like, it's supposed to awaken them and make them believe in themselves when they get lost. And those were manga only originally until Crystal came out. In Crystal, the Eternal movie, you did see them all, that scene where they're all holding the fairies. That scene is actually, like, directly plucked right from the manga, which was nice. Okay. Did we ever um, see their, like, to... their castle in the movie? Because isn't there a like, respective Okay. Yes, there is a respective castle. Yeah. Yes, but we haven't seen Cosmos yet, because Cosmos is when they bring in the Outer's castles. And we'll start seeing that. Now, the only castle they show in the beginning mm -hmm. of Sailor Moon is the Moon Kingdom mm -hmm. in the manga. They mm -hmm. don't show any of the other castles till Cosmos, as we'll start seeing those. And they have shown the Moon Kingdom pretty much everywhere, but they didn't do what Crystal did, which is the Moon Kingdom supposed to be their command center, like in the mm -hmm. end, and can do things. Yeah. And then for anybody wondering, and thank you, Sailor Denzel, for the name. Sailor, it's the Maynads, Maynads. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's these characters that I was talking about. Maynads. Yeah, who are like little Serenity clones, but they are also like the, I believe they're named. They're in Helios. Thank Helios. you. Elysian. Oh, okay. That's where it is. The I need to rewatch the movie. Yeah, they're the Shrine Maidens. And they are in the manga. They did not show them in the 90s anime when they showed um, at least. Mm -hmm. um, so they were crystal only. And that's because, like I said, crystal is bringing in the characters that were supposed to actually be in there and made sense. Yep. But they serve as the priestesses. Of oh, and look, there's even differences in crystal. Sailor Moon Wiki was even nice enough to do that. So when Queen Helena arrives in Elysian for the final battle, they are shown and heard screaming and Crystal, while the manga panel with their scream speech bubble didn't show at all. Which is, that's a cool use. Like I like mm -hmm. that they're 
like fixing things that maybe she wanted to fix in the past. And then in the manga, they are shown standing next to Helios as he is speaking to a certain eternal state. So close. In the manga, they are shown standing next to Helios as he is speaking to Eternal Sailor Chippy Moon and Diana once he stands up at being revived, but he stays sitting in the scene and they are not shown with Helios until the coronation in Sailor Moon Eternal. So it's like interesting. I, There's this really, I fell into this very late last mm-hmm. night making notes. Mm-hmm. You can fall into a rabbit hole for easily over an hour if you're looking at just twin characters or sets of identical characters like Between the manga and the anime, there's actually, like, a lot. Like, a frightening amount. Mm -hmm. You're right. Because there's a lot of it. There's two sets of twins of the anime mates. There's Mm -hmm. the twins right there for the Elysium. There's twins. There's more twins, aren't there? Like, there's the Black Moon Clan has the, oh my god, the Something Brothers. I don't know why I want to say the Blue Boy Brothers. That's Singer, but that's now. (laughs) And they are actually in all forms because yep. they are manga they are anime and they are crystal crystal yeah and then so there's it, the the gardeners the, I love them. the sailor star gardeners i love them so much and i was so mad after i read after i realized that they weren't in the anime i'm like what these characters are epic i realized another character we will not see unless they do a little movie skit and it is manga only. You will never see them anywhere else. The Children of the Scouts and Kosaki. Oh, yeah, the parallel sailor mm-hmm. extras. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. They are manga but only. Doesn't, didn't you they do not... like an homage to Kosagi or at least her design in PGSM? Is there uh, not a bunny ooh. Fuku? You're right. I remember that Fuku. I know what Fuku you're talking about. What? If they didn't Luna? name her that. No, yeah, it was just, if they didn't name her, it was like a, just a big nod. But I think at some point, Usagi moonlights as like a wannabe Sailor V and she ends up having that, like parallel moons Fuku. I remember but that might have just been like a deep cut or a fever dream. No, I remember this. I have this in my head somewhere. I don't remember what it's called, though. Oh, and she had bunnies in her hair? Yeah. Yeah, like little, little pom-pom found it, things. Found it. Sailor Rabbit. They're okay. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, you're right. Oh, it, my God. Was that supposed to be like a nod to Kosagi? I think so. I'm pretty sure. If not, it was like the recycled design, but like with a Party City budget. Oh, my God. Because, oh, my. That's the Party right. City budget. Exactly. We've the, all been there. Like, we all, as cosplayers. Yes. I actually would love to get a hold of the statue that one of the statue makers has made of Koosagi. Because she's such a cute character. I love her. Like, a lot. She's a and then, fun. of course, this, the children of the scouts. Who look like little carbon copies of them. I was going to say, I don't that... remember that at all. Yeah, they each oh, have. Yeah, they were the like other girls. Passing... Yeah, it's like a passing mention and you see them and that brings up so many questions because were the soldiers before the ones we know also identical are it's just like cell division they just make a new one on their own if you wait long enough like is it reincarnation is this like the galaxy cauldron only knows one thing and that's the same thing it's gonna spit out every time at least give them different haircuts too close you get pregnant that's what happened to queen serenity she got too close she got pregnant that is such a good point out. I never realized that PGSM reference was a Kosagi reference, but I a thousand percent am on board for that theory. Mm-hmm. That was my big obsession in high school. I've seen, I've easily seen PGSM like 30 times. It is so big. It's not work. That is amazing. I love that. I love PGSM. But yeah, like you'll, you won't, we won't see them unless they do like a little, mm. a little cartoon short of Kosagi, so we'll probably never see her hmm. which is sad because i think her character design is adorable that is actually sad because aren't there short stories in the manga of her i think she's just, just one she's just, just the one. one okay yeah and it's like all of them are mom like all the scouts are moms and they all have like 
all their kids are the same age and Ko Usagi is I think she's a little bit younger than the other girl and she's mm-hmm. made fun of because she's a princess and they were like mm, we don't want to hang out with you like, and then you get a, you do get a glimpse of Chibiusa and Hota because they're high schoolers I believe oh, oh that be and they're so going cute. to high school together and I'm like no stop they're so cute I and they're like they uh, much more adult tell. drawn so like Chibius is actually growing up, which is nice. All right. So shall we get into the characters that we're going to see in Sailor Moon Cosmos that we should start, like, looking at? Let me see when Loki's coming home. Oh, yeah, because we usually take our break for that. Start delving into that, because if Loki comes home in the next 10 minutes, we better find something. Hold up. (laughs) No, and then, oh, ETA 822. Okay, so we have 10 minutes. So... We figure something else out. Um, Let's talk about the movies. Let's talk about the anime-only movie characters, because I would actually like to talk about the Ice Queen. Okay. I know, I looked at something. Like, oh, God, I'm gay. She was so beautiful. Is she in the manga? I don't think so. I'm trying to remember. because They have the second movie, right, in the manga? I think she is, but she's a little different. And in one of the one of the newer Mews, she's also in it, but also again a little bit wrong. Yeah, because they just redid the movie, the Princess Kaku, the yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, the I can never pronounce it, but yes. Yeah, so this is Kaguya. That's what I was trying to say. So this is her. If you guys don't remember her, she is amazing. She's gigantic. She is very. I like that they genuinely made her ice cold. And she has some of the best backup in the, in the, yep. you know what? The answers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Words are not my friends tonight. But I genuinely think, like, it's an interesting character because it is one that you see. I don't believe we ever see any guys. I think it's all just female designs in a female army. Mm-hmm. It is. Which I'm here for that. <laughs> no I, do find it, I do find it interesting because the sn- the snow maidens they took that same like aspect and they did it with the nehalenia clones oh that's right and i love that because the snow dancers are some of my favorite little villain thingies i think they're very and they use that same like where the snow dancers giggle the mm-hmm. nehalenia ones giggle too but like at a different pitch mm. so, yeah these are really good ones yeah yes, sorry to throw you this lucero <laughs> Uh, I just was like, oh, sorry, no. I know we're going off script, but yeah, no, I no, just think I agree. I totally agree, Celine. And I think that she is an impactful character because of her design and because, I don't know, Silver Crystal Power, the power of love and friendship. There is something about that movie that I just vibe with so hard. Hmm. And I think it has a lot to do with her as a villain. They didn't they like tell me- that oh. she knew the queen. Sorry, go ahead. Mm. I keep talking over y'all. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, ahead, I talk too much. Please go ahead. Um, I think the other, the big standout point at least is Human Luna's canon in that movie being so different from what we see in the manga and everything else and her little romance interest. It's really cute. It's very compelling. So cute. And I love at the end though, she goes back to Artemis and he has the rose. Of, and like, whenever they're just standing together and like their tails are going and he's blushing, I'm just like, my heart, my actual heart. I shipped this so hard. I was a kid and I didn't even know that that it was a thing I wanted to ship. Artemis could have done better and it never would have happened. I, I want them together. I think it was a very interesting kind of way to show human Luna mm. because she is an artwork. Artemis is too, but like Luna's artwork, that yellow where she's sitting on the moon is a very popular artwork that a lot of mm. people know for human Luna. Is that cheating? Mm-hmm. Luna's yeah, I'm just gonna go for this human guy because Artemis fucked up. So I think it's very interesting that they were like, "Oh, we can find a way to bring human Luna in just for this movie." Mm-hmm. I'm like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, this was, I believe, the artwork you were talking about, right? Yes, and that is very well known. Oh, it's so known. It's so pretty. <laughs> Even Lynn is. Yeah, I love that. That's one of my favorite artworks. I actually wouldn't mind getting that tattooed on me because it's so beautiful. Oh, that'd be great. Um, and, but like I said, I love the Snow Queen. Hands down, one of my favorite movie villains. Villains, villains, villains. There we go. Word. 
because I don't like the next movie, which is, was it Baba? Whatever the oh, name is. I Baba. can never say it right. Let me check. It's, she's got such a weird name. It was not use Dollar Tree. <laughs> We're coming up with the spicy opinions today. I love it. Controversial, yet brave. That's what the show is about. Speaking of <laughs> Oh my god, why can't I find the movie name? Oh my gosh, it's I know it's called The Dark Dream Hole. And then... Yeah, that title could have been maybe a little more family-friendly in English. Yeah, it didn't translate the best. Bob Di- Badiano. Oh, Badiano. Thank you, Loki. All right. Yeah, but it... And by the way, what was the point of that movie? Like, genuinely, like, why did they have to have the third movie? Not that it is not good, but why did they have to have the third movie? Wanted, they wanted a seven out love interest. I don't know. No, because she had for Badiano, she had the design for her as a villain. Because if you look in the art book, hmm. she's got the designs for those characters. Yeah, you're right. Maybe she does. This was like the compromise between please stop writing for the serialization we'll give you a movie but just chill out a little bit yeah because in the art book where they they do the breakdown of the characters designs and stuff because i own Mm -hmm. that one i own two of the art books and i happen to own the collect the what's it called the materials materials collection Um, yeah i have the materials collection and she's in it um hey this is the look design that you're talking about Yes. So she's in the that collection, materials collection. So is Petteru. And like she's got like faint sketches of the brothers. Like she's got mm. like their head. Um it's interesting. But I think that's probably why they got a movie, because she probably already had the sketches down and she's like, I think these are cool. And to be fair, they are. Because uh, the first movie guy, what is his name? Fior. Fiore. Fiore. Yeah. He is not in the collections material book. Oh, interesting. And I don't think the Ice Queen is either. I'm trying to remember. Hmm, I got to look that. at it, but I don't think she is. Maybe you can check on break <laughs> if you have time. I'm like, I don't think she is, if I remember correctly. No, but uh, and by the way, and in case people don't know this, because we will be doing an episode coming up, the third movie was actually supposed to be about Uranus and Neptune, and Uranus was supposed yes. to get a pegasus that she was gonna ride and <laughs> so that's i think why the third movie feels a little discombobulated and mm. i agree loki though but you have to admit Pepperu is so easily roasted because he's like diet helios that's being very generous <laughs> i'm trying to be nice here in case he's somebody's favorite character oh yeah oh my gosh I... where it's like he is, but he looks so much like Helios. I'm like, okay, Rini, you have a type. We figured out your type, honey. You like fictitious men. You know, you like them where you're not sure if they're really dependable. They come and go. There's some element of a dream man here, very literally. And that's great, honey, <laughs> but something <laughs> matters. Yes, exactly. Bills are She does have a page. Oh. Sorry. He's the Helios we have. Oh. <laughs> It's like when you ask for food when you're running. Oh my god, I love the Helios we have at home. You got Helios at home, honey. That's the little kid, was it? Barbie, we have Barbie at home. Barbie. I love the curvy Barbie. Oh, but all right. So, anything else that we want to talk about before we go to break? Yes. Very quick. Sailor Coach and Sailor Chanel. Wait, I'm sorry, what? They're in one of the side stories in the extra manga. They're like bootleg scouts from an adult shop that has a Sailor V mannequin. Oh my god, really? Sailor Oh my god, you know this is what? so no girl. This is so no I'm saying do things this. for the with a lot of confidence tonight and I'm um, starting to not feel so cold for it. <laughs> We've totally no, yeah. might be right. Oh no, definitely. That's the thing. There, you might 100% be right. I just might not know it. There's so much to know in the Sailor Moon universe. Like, it, and of course, Sailor Moon actually just had a collaboration with Chanel. So that's all that's yes. coming up right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll look for him during break. Okay. Because, oh, wait. Is this it? Is 
this it? These guys? Yes. Yeah. What? Yeah. Sailor Chanel and Sailor Gucci? I'm sorry. Who? Yeah. I am so here for this. Thank you, Lucero, for telling us about this because this just made my day. What? Sailor Chanel and Sailor Gucci. I am so here for that. Nalkawood. Nalkawood. Oh, yeah. So we are wrong. Oh. Snow Kaguya is in the map. Oh, okay. I'm just dying over here right now. I'm in love. I think they were I think they were also maybe a nod to the PQ Angel designs from her previous serialization because the hairstyles are like wildly similar. Oh, and they're really cute hairstyles. Oh yeah. Oh my god, thank you for bringing this up though. This is something new that I forgot about that I am here for. Oh my gosh. I'm See, gonna... there's always something new to learn in Sailor Moon, everybody. <laughs> All right, I take it it's time for our break. Sure is. Look, All just... right, so guys, we will be back in 15 minutes and I will put up our caption. Please feel free to nice, take a good stretch and we will see you back here at 837. All right. Hey, guys. And we are back with part two. Yeah. We moves next week. So we look forward to that. All right, and now we are getting back into out of the adaptation the characters of the Sailor Moon friend. All right, so first things first. So I think we should start now with the Sailor Anima meet because there are so many there. And it brings up what you were talking about. What Naoko has a thing for twins, I think. Mm -hmm. There's something about Naoko and twins where she, I don't know if it's the design or what, but, and I think it's interesting because the Sailor Anima meet are similar but they're different looking i'm trying to pull up a picture twins hold a very powerful significance also so which yeah there's that overarching theme of like, like cyclical lives and being reborn again to make these choices to be together and then twins have like, that whole folklore about like star cross lovers that are born again to be together from day one oh, so i, never heard I don't that. know if that's, yeah i don't know if it's like inherently the intention but that also sounds like romantically in her pool of scenes. Definitely. Yeah, because here is a full look at all of the anime mates from the musical. So we got Princess Galaxia. We have Sailor Galaxia. We have Sailor Tin Yonko, Sailor Aluminum Siren, Sailor Lead Crow, Sailor Tin Yonko, Sailor Heavy Metal Papillon, Sailor, I never know if I'm pronouncing it. Please, somebody correct me if I'm not. Sailor Chi. And Sailor Phi, and then Sailor Lethe, and then Sailor, I cannot pronounce her name, <laughs> Sailor M. So I, I apologize if that is your favorite Sailor. I, it is, is it Greek or Latin? I can't pronounce it. It's M N E. It's a big name. It's, I know it's rooted in history, but I just find them fascinating. I think she did it because she saw two colors on the outfits that she wanted. She was like, make them twins so I can do both. <laughs> You think so? Okay, so why don't I, why don't we break them down by category? Lucero, you are the guest. Which would you like to start with? Okay, the glaring one to me is just Papillon because I'll, also I've been saying Sailor Animates my whole life and it's only right now it's a like, girl. That's maybe not how you say that word. I called him. No, I found out on stream. Someone had corrected me. That's how I found it. Epiphanies everywhere. Sure we're like anima mates. And we're like, anima. say what? Okay. <laughs> we're like, shit. You're right. There is another letter in there. Shit. Yeah. What throws me is the word, like the, oh, and I don't even know the study of that. But like, you know, how, anyway, it's animals, minerals. Papillon's a damn bug. Or sorry, is a dang bug. What is going oh, no, on you can there? Swear. Why is she the exception? And then she's heavy metals. I'm sorry, but I'm getting on my little soapbox. Everybody has like a theme for attacks or like, with the exception of Jupiter and the floral thunder, whatever. Let's just ignore her for a second. Papillon in the manga has four different, three different elements and then butterflies. Is that just because she's an amalgamation of other minerals, like just generally heavy metals? Or is it because oh. she's a bug? There's so many things. Honestly, like, Nalco is probably like, I want to draw a butterfly. I think I, just, I, don't I, don't, I think Lucera could be onto something. I love a good theory like that. Like, what if that Papillon piece? That's the thing. Isn't butterflies like something really to do with like 
death and rebirth because she said she said a specific one here i took some notes from the sailor moon wiki sailor heavy metal papillon she catches the whenever she is introduced oh papillon means butterfly in french gosh mm-hmm. oh, no. butterflies are the messengers of death oh. that's why if you see them in bleach the butterfly lands on them it's because they pass the messages of the dead really i didn't know that oh we see her in the manga she catches the group off guard and captures and restrains them with vines, intending them to make them the subject of her next funeral procession after burning them alive. Manga's dark, kids. <laughs> Manga's really dark. You so, earned that gore warning. Yeah, everybody's oh, a sailor moon, and I'm like, no, the manga. The manga's dark. Papillon. Thank you. Thank you so much. I did not take French. I needed. I need the help. That's why the one dog's called a papillon is because its ears look like butterflies. That's this is a you know. no moment. I know. I feel like I'm learning that so much fun. tonight. But I think that she is an interesting character because I think she is one of the most aesthetic sh- characters that Noko drew. Like, oof, that manga artwork, though, of her. I'm trying to... I do find it interesting that she's only in that one part, just like the twins. Yeah. Where you have... The other ones where they actually showed up and were actually killing the scouts. And she's like, she's the final anime mate in the group, I think. I think so. And for those who don't know who we're talking about, this is her. And you see her a lot in the manga like this. You know what? I give, you know what? Fair to the musicals. Look at how hard that would have been to design. Mm -hmm. How in the world would you have a giant set of butterfly wings with nothing to put them in? Mm Mm-hmm. Those quick changes, impossible. That's how you lose an eye. Oh, easily. As a cosplayer, they we all the know. Costume. Exactly. Someone's popping a titty out. <laughs> Mid dance. I'm wondering. But it is such a cool design. And oh, sorry. Oh no, it's like right now. Gears are turning slowly, but they're going somewhere. <laughs> the okay, because she is the last of the anima mates, and she has that whole death variable. I'm wondering if she's a parallel to saturn like maybe she's the last one and so different because of a repeat of the general character archetype that's an interesting idea because we don't really see a lot of parallels for saturn in the show i feel like Mm. like she doesn't get as many uh, like parallel i'm trying to think of a different word but where there's characters that she is the focus because of that yeah, a mirror, a mirror Thank image, you. essentially. <laughs> she doesn't really get that because she's supposed to be like the end all to end all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or foil. So. Foil is another great one, and I believe she is going to be in the new movie. Correct? Yes, she has been shown. Okay, I'm trying to find that picture. Ah, here it there is. There is artwork for her. And look, they did it so like actually. Wow, I am just killing it tonight <laughs> with words. <laughs> They did it so true, so like faithful to the design. They didn't try to mix it up or anything. That I'm excited because I'm hoping that the anima mates all get acrylic stands. Oh God, genius! I want her as an acrylic stand, or like all of them in one thing as an acrylic stand. I'm like, give it to me. I don't care if it's just an acrylic stand. I want something like just ten out of. They have not released much of the villain stuff. Like Galaxy is getting a little sumsum. Do you know what the sumsums are? Oh, oh, the stacking pillow thing. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> Celine happens to have oh. Usagi, and here I'll make you. Adam, right here I'll, I'll pull your screen up a little. Them. Oh my god! There's the Amazon Quartet. They're so cute. Galaxy is actually getting one. I hope As they- is Chibi and Princess Kaku. I hope they actually use, like, proper foiled fabric instead of just, like, the felt minky, because the texture would really make it pop. Oh, my God. I'm the shiny mm-hmm. galaxy. Oh, yeah, poor Mars. Yeah, one of the Zoom Zooms didn't make it this week. Oh, no. Because the cat picked it up off my desk and dropped it on the floor, and Stella thought it was a toy. Which, like, you can't blame Stella because it looks like a stuffed ant, like one of her stuffed toys. Yep. I can blame the cats, however. <laughs> I guarantee you. You think it was done? Luna's done that before. She plucked stuff up because she likes to pick stuff up like a dog. And she'll go, walk it over and go, Bip. and I'm like, 
please. But yeah, Mars didn't make it, and I got to figure out which one she was so that I can reorder her from the Sailor Moon store. Because now I'm missing one. But Because Stella destroyed it. She didn't turn it inside out, but she did rip its feet off in the bow. Oh my gosh. Oh. But still a heavy metal pop on. I do think it is very poetic, and I am very interested to see if they expand upon her at all. Because, like, even her intro here, like, her intro is fire. Oh, here, let me do this better. There we go. She has such dynamic, like, you can tell Naoko was really excited to draw her. I feel like she was, like, her design was from, um, what do, what do they call it? Festival from Brazil. Like, mm-hmm. she's a very festival outfit. Like, she even has the wings because a lot of them have big things on their back for festival. Oh, Wasn't yeah. Samba dancing, like, one of her influences? There was, like, a note somewhere. Oh, that's cool. I'd have to look at the materials. But we have to talk about what this just happened with Sailor Denzel. Sailor Denzel says, She is such a fascinating mystery because in the materials collection, it's stated that Pap... I'm trying to say it night. Papillon is a mother. It's interesting to think about. Other than Usagi, she's the only character I have a child. I want to know what the story is there. What? A villain with a kid? I didn't even remember that. I forgot that. A villain with a kid? And oh. she abandoned them clearly because she's doing this thing. Yep, and then oh, Loki yeah. coming in. Let's see. In the materials collection, several personal facts were about heavy metal Papillon. She is very emotional and cries fragile tears and is described as promiscuous. She is a mother of one and a samba dancer. So everything just tied in right there. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So she's a mother? But they don't say anything of that in the manga. It's just in the materials collection. Where's the story? I want the story. No. Oh my gosh. Now I want to know, like, where's her child? Like, did yeah. Galaxia take her? That or she's dead. What a lovely thought. Never <laughs> told me much God. Yeah. yeah they, they were conquered planets. Like, when yeah. Darth Vader, Thanos. Yeah, Galaxia really did do the Thanosing. Let's see. Oh, okay. So, uh, Loki coming in again. The heavy metal is a broad category of metallic elements with high densities, which include, among others, iron, aluminum, lead, and tin, the metals associated with the previous four anima mates. Yeah, so she is... You un- you get all the other ones and you unlock the last one, and that's Saturn and all the... Oh, my God. Like the Infinity Stone. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Oh, yeah, you get... The- so is she the gauntlet? Oh, my gosh. That's so interesting. I did not know that. And now it's going to be, oh, uh, what if they, I know, I know, we're probably not going to get it. But just imagine if they expanded upon the manga in the movies and actually brought up her kid. Like that or they'll do maybe a flashback of her like shadows and she's holding a child or something like that. They maybe, um, but I don't know because they haven't really done any expansion inside the movies. They've been cutting heavily cosmos like i said cosmos can stand up to being two movies because it is a shorter arc in the manga unlike eternal eternal was a much longer arc yes it should not have been two movies no it should have been a series well stand by that shit there was just too I much cheated oh i agree i totally agree and queen of helena deserved better all right i am looking up how to say this other character's name because I want to talk about the pink and the blue twin. Yeah. Because they are Sailor Lefe and Sailor... I'm going to pronounce this right, I swear. I believe in myself. Oh, speaking of twins, the the Witches 5 had a set of twins. Oh, you're right. There was a set of twins. Because I have their stuffed okay. animals. Oh, God. One is on... One of the canons, like, they're twins, but they're... Te- like, what's one person that splits into two people? Oh, are we going for Persona 5? She put the side if she wanted a red one or a blue one. She was like, let's do both. That's fine. You look so good either way. Oh, my gosh. But, all right. So, talking a little bit about these two, let me pull up their picture. And then, so these are the twins we're going to be talking about. Is it Manasi? I can't find the pronunciation and I don't want to say it wrong. Can you send me the name really quick? Yes. I just, I don't want to pronounce it wrong and I feel like a dork. (laughs) Got it. Let me find. It is M N 
Thank you guys. This is called a live show. That's it's what... Nemesine. Okay, Menacee? Okay. No, Nemesine. Nemesine. Don't pronounce the M. It's a Greek name. It's Nemesine. Got it. So Sailor Lethe and Sailor Nemesine. Yes. Okay, so these are the two we're going to be talking about first up for the twins. So Sailor mm-hmm. Lethe is one of the five rivers of Hades in Greek mythology and together from the outermost perimeters of the underworld. And by the way, this is all again from Sailor Moon Wikipedia. I was doing, I thought they had really great clips, so I wanted to plug that. Sailor Lethe and her sister Sailor Nenesi are the Sailor Senshi of the binary stars Lethe and Nenesi, unlike the Sailor Animates, who were not true Senshi. The... Lethe? This is called Lethe. me trying to pronounce things today. I was going Lethe. off. Lethe? Okay, Lethe, thank you. All right, and the worlds they oversaw were chaotic and war-torn until the day Sailor Galaxia can bring, came bringing death. With no other option to protect her sister, Sailor Lethe swore to serve Galaxia as part of her shallow, shadow galactic empire, where she watched over the rib, desert river of oblivion at Sagittarius Zero Star, hoping for the day when they would have peace. So it is a sad story yeah because the tw- those twins follow her because they have to don't get a choice mm-hmm. they did not believe in what she did no they basically had no choice like they and i think that's why you see in a lot of the images a lot of them like holding on to each other you can also tell which one's lethe yep because she's the bold one while nemesine is the shy one mm-hmm. yeah because this one is nemesine and then this one mm-hmm. is Lethe. Those mm-hmm. of our viewers. It's just, it's so interesting because it's like, we see now a character, which we didn't really get. Because, okay, in the 90s anime, we see Leg Crow, we see Aluminum Siren, we see a bunch of them. And they, I don't necessarily say like Sailor Galaxia. <laughs> like is a strong word. <laughs> she, um, they snarp her though. They like, that's their commander-in-chief, essentially. Oh, 100%. And I just think it's, like, a really interesting thing because it be- becomes, they become more relatable because you understand when you are backed up against a wall and literally they have their souls stolen. They have their star seats stolen. Like, they are literally in cuffs and with their souls stolen. So, like, they have nowhere to go. She has it. She's not going to give it back. It is the villain pyramid scheme that's really, like, pushing the story forward. And they're such compelling characters. I'm genuinely really interested to see what they do in the new movie, because this is what I could find for their new designs. Yep, I'm excited. It's going to be interesting. Just give me acrylic stands. That's all I want. I at least want something. Give me something. No, and they meet, they see, those two are after Sailor Heavy Metal Papillon. Yeah. I think the twins were like the last ones, like both set of twins. Oh, okay. Because I know Sailor Star Gardeners were the last, they were the last set, I believe, yeah. before because they were in the actual garden. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting. And I believe, if I'm wrong, someone correct me, but I believe that the Sailor Star Gardeners actually kill Lethe and Nemocene because yeah. they call them weak and say mm-hmm. that if you can't stand up to the Sailor Scouts, then we'll take care of you right now. Yeah, I think it's, oh gosh, Nemesine. She's mm-hmm. like, she's sitting there. I Oh, I'm pretty sure she thinks that if there's any chance of them making it out, she has to rely on Sailor Moon. So she has the whole thing of, let's believe in them, sister. Then the other gardeners come over, just shut up. That's not the plan. And then they kill them. Yeah. Yeah, they stab them. Yeah. Yeah, but... And it's funny because Sailor, and if I'm pronouncing it wrong, again, Loki, please help me. <laughs> Sailor Phi and Sailor Chi, they are brutal. They are mean. They are, they actually have a body count. <laughs> They're also adults, which is probably why. Uh, oh, you think that's it? They're much more mature characters. They're drawn much more mature than Alethe and Nemesis. No, I never thought about it. Those two are more of like teenage characters. You have Fee, Fee and she are adults, like Galaxia. Oh, and for those who don't know who we're talking about, these are them. Yeah. 
those tiny ass little waists. Jesus Christ. I know, right? Oh, and then Loki coming in with a fun fact. So, Lethe is the river of forgetfulness, and Nemesis is the goddess of memory. Ooh, are we playing in wanting to believe and forget? And for oh, that's interesting because memory is such a unique theme in Sailor Moon because it we start out literally with them remembering like their past lives. Mm. So it's. Oh, and I wonder how much do you think Lethe and Nemes Nemesis are able to remember their full past, or do you think that they are just trying or they are brainwashed somehow? Nemesine's probably the only one who remembers them. Mm. Yeah. Just to play on that whole goddess of memory and shit like that. Yeah, because Lethe seems to be the more brutal one, right? And and then Lucera, any other points you wanted to make on those two? I'm, I'll be very real. I'm having a heck of a brain fart on these two. Please, <laughs> no worries. Other than points we covered, I think it's, I don't know, it's another going back to that whole twin situation, but it's always, it's just really sad that throughout the series and every iteration, every canon, that every time we're introduced to them, like none of them have had a happy ending. And when they all go, it's always together at least. And there's some like very, vulnerable intimate moment about their last moments and they're always like clinging to each other and it's so well it's very hard wrenching and you know what's going to happen you see a new one you're like maybe not this time but there's 20 of them and it's just like watching cars at a trash heap go on the conveyor belt and you're like oh maybe they'll miss this one and they don't they never <laughs> that's, actually a, that's actually a fantastic metaphor <laughs> I think we were all traumatized by the brave little toaster, and that's really what's coming through at this point. No, 100%, 1,000%. Brave little toaster messed me up as a kid. It's true. Oh, my gosh. And we won't get into super spoilers because Sailor Moon Cosmos is coming out, so we won't tell about, like, exactly what they do. But I do think it is an interesting set of of what kind of choices the fact that they do end up believing in sailor moon and how badly that goes for them because they like want to be free want to be free and technically yeah. freedom and death oh i don't think they were looking for that but uh probably not let's see it's also interesting though because there's that they are killed off for being weaklings but between the two of them, it is significantly harder to have a faith when you're like the odds are stacked against you and really banking and holding out. That's what's going to come out one way or another if you just work hard enough for it. That's that takes a lot to keep that going. So between the sets of twins, I think it's a lot easier to say they're weak for continuing to try despite being knocked down over and over again than just going with the path of least resistance yeah and oh no i totally agree with you and then amy coming in with a really good point freedom and death is like a reoccurring theme in sailor moon that i didn't read into until much later in life and honestly big same like they're the way they handle villains is so interesting in sailor moon because it's really more of you see every type of outcome you could get with a villain mm. from redemption to no redemption whatsoever to like where they might switch sides. Like, it's, I think the villains are one of the reasons why the Sailor Moon franchise does so great. And I think freedom and death is one of the more mature concepts of Sailor Moon. That is why the show is so resonating with us as adults because Noko did put those themes in there. And then. <laughs> I Loki. I mean, Loki's got to go. Like you get to read <laughs> Would you then argue that Usagi's immortality is then a, a jail sentence? That is. I always thought Usagi had everything like pitch perfect, but now I'm like, dang. Because you're right, she doesn't ever get to die and be at peace. I also know why that a lot of the anima mates were not in. Sailor oh. Moon. Do tell. Because the manga was going on at the same time as the show. What? Yeah. So the manga ran its serialization from December 28th, 1991 to February 3rd, 1997. 
the anime ran from March 7th, 1992, which is why we got the Anne and Allen arc. Because they need to give more time. And it ended on February 8th, 1997. It ended literally several, what, five days, not even, yeah, five days after the last page of the manga was released. Wow. That's wild. And explained everything. So they, mm-hmm. so they only had the four main anima mates, which is why we didn't get them. Oh, man. Okay. Loki's coming in. All right. We're about to fight. I can feel it. All right. Loki says, would you then argue that Mama Serenity is a prisoner of her own immortality? And she fucked around and found out to end it all and have the sweet release of death. Dang. Now you're making me feel bad for Mama Serenity. Because could she have been trapped in eternal life? Mm -hmm. That's a hard. That really depends on which canon specifically we're talking about and what, like, the imagery they're going and without going into spoilers for the movie coming up, that could be a compelling argument, but there's other factors about cyclical things in nature and like being reborn and the memories you do retain that are like core to your personality and then what's nurtured out of you as a response and then how that affects the trajectory of things. And because like Sailor Moon's not her mom. But the Sailor Moon we know isn't also the future Neo Queen. Like, these are all different facets of a... That's make it sound like a dissertation. But <laughs> No, don't worry. We ain't doing that here. College study of Sailor Moon. Yeah. This, my college dissertation. <laughs> You're too powerful. No, but you know what? I never thought about that. The Queen Serenity might have actually been wishing to finally pass on. And that maybe that's why she was just, like, finally ready. I don't think she meant to pass on the way she did, because everybody else died in the that's process. Her. But it is interesting, because Usagi had to kill herself. Yes, in the manga. And now in Crystal. Yeah. Immortality. They're immortal as in they can't age, but they can be killed. Which is something to remember, because, yeah, that just... That's interesting. <laughs> no, Loki, it's a really good discussion because I mm. hadn't really thought about that. It's interesting. But all right. Any other point? Anybody else have any final thoughts on that discussion before we get back to our anima mates? <laughs> no. I, found the fact, I found the fact that I found out that there's a reason why all this stuff wasn't in the original 90s anime. That just makes so much sense. Like now that you say that. They didn't have the source material. Let's talk about the close, though, despite it. Right? Honestly, I'm impressed. So let's talk about these. I mean, they did change the story a little bit for stars. Did they? Oh, for stars, yeah. Because, um, oh. like, Tuxedo Mask doesn't die when he's the way he's supposed to. And Usagi doesn't have the PTSD that she has in the manga. I'm trying not to remember that Pomo died right in front of her. Yeah, and that's a huge part of the story. Because it's a lot more... How would you say, what are, like, the big differences between the manga and stars? Besides the fact that they got rid of the animates, a lot of the, like, a lot of the animates, which now we understand why. And Galaxia isn't as unhinged as she is in the manga. You also don't have the Galaxy Cauldron. Yeah. Yeah. And Chippy Chippy, we will be talking about, we are going to end our final discussion with Sailor Moon Cosmos herself and then go into our predictions for the movies. So we'll be getting to her. <laughs> yes, Chippy Chippy. So originally, I have this written somewhere that I need. Oh, the cauldron's going to be, the cauldron's going to be all wild. Yeah, the cauldron wasn't a thing. Her romance with Seiya's a lot different in the manga. Mm-hmm. Because Seiya's the one who is writing the letters posing as Mamoru. Oh, that's right. Essentially with the tarot cards she pulls up mm. this yeah because Seiya knows he's dead mm. but he doesn't Seiya doesn't know that in the 90s anime no not at all it makes him so funny so funny mm-hmm. and Amy I agree with you oh. I had to reread the cauldron at least 20 times and I still need to reread it again and thank you Loki for the pronunciations I'll correct my pronunciations I pronounce it is pronounced Phi and Kai 
for instead of phi and chi. So I <laughs> am getting better now at Greek. <laughs> I'm wondering how they're going to say I'm in the actual anime. Yeah, and just a little background. We'll find out how Japan does it. On the background for them. So they are actually origins unknown. Did you guys know that? That we don't get their backstory. Oh. As far as I know, unless anyone can correct me, from what I could research, we don't know where they come from. Because Naoko is probably fucking Russian. <laughs> but they are called the Stellar Star Gardeners, and they cultivate garden crystals at the Star Garden of the Galactic Palace. And this is all from Sailor Moon Wikipedia again. Let's see. Bye. Executes traitors, kills unconscious. She's this. She's like the big bad of the. Like she is the muscle of the twins, and it's it's pretty crazy. Though I will say, Sailor Kai also has a body count. Like they both interchangeably kill many important characters that you guys are going to be shook with. They're probably killing the scouts that turn against galaxia yeah that's what they mean by traitors yeah there's there's a lot of talk of traitors in this season because she probably had an army and she's down to these few because they're the only ones who've shown loyalty but then you've got lethe and nemesine who get killed later because they try to believe in sailor moon which is treasonous yep and that's death. And something that's going to be interesting in the cauldron, and this is the spoiler alert, but we see Mama Serenity again. Mama mm -hmm. Serenity is coming back. Like she is coming back for the cauldron. Like I don't know if I, I don't know how to put the importance of the Galaxy Cauldron on the show. The cauldron is where everything is about to go down. The cauldron is essentially supposed to represent the middle of the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. Like the cauldron is the Big Bang. It is where everything's made. Mm -hmm. Is where stars are made. That is where scouts are made. That's where it empowers the stars to have scouts. Yes. And it's going to be interesting, I just think, because I feel like the Sailor Star Gardeners played such an important role in the manga with how they killed the, uh, a lot of characters. And I think that not having those characters die in that way in the 90s anime didn't make it as impactful as mm -hmm. it was in the manga because i'm sorry there is a shot in the manga where you literally see them taking their staff and impaling a main character there is no off-screen death there is no subtlety it is straight up impalement i think we got more emotion though in the 90s because of how people died That's an we got much more emotional connection with how people died in the 90s anime because i was sobbing that whole final like five episodes i was a baby i was crying the whole time i still cry about it yeah neptune and uranus the their last were, moments like, are like outside. burns into my brain forever their death when they're just reaching out and they're like you feel warm and i'm just like sailor mars dying right in front of sailor moon like mars in front of moon again and that's the worst part it's happening again for the third fourth week it's hard to keep track in the mm -hmm. series how many times they die together time technically this is only their second time really? dying yes because they die during yeah. daryl and she re and she gets them to be reborn they do not actually die at any other point oh i was counting until Galaxy i was yet. counting silver millennium oh okay so three times yeah. silver millennium they die barrels fight they die and then Galaxia's fight they die mm -hmm. Oh, we know. They die during the Death Buster? Oh, they do die during Death Busters, like, technically. Yes, Death Busters. Sorry. They do die during Death Busters. They're just kind of like whack-a-mole. You just hit them and they come back up. Like, yeah. <laughs> they. I don't think they die during the Hellenia. No. I don't think so. I don't think so. Anyone in the comments are different, feel free to check out. And they don't die during Black Moon. No. <laughs> Amy, I was just thinking the same thing. Amy comes in and saying, how the heck did I survive this? <laughs> Honestly, food. But in the anime, they only die during Barrel, the Moon Kingdom, but they die during Barrel. I don't, they don't die during Death Busters. Mm -hmm. They get captured. Yeah. They don't die like in the anime. I mean, in the manga. And then 
they die during Galaxia. But Death Busters, if I remember correctly, they were captured in the anime. They weren't. I believe so. Oh, Mm. because she gets them back. She gets them back from the house because they're in the final, like the final battle with uh, Mistress Nine. And she, I yeah, think she does right. bring them, she does bring them back. Why am I saying, yeah, Mistress, Mistress Nine. Yes. Deathbusters is Mistress Nine. She <laughs> does bring them back during that battle? I don't fucking know. They die so many times in the month. Oh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. And by the and this is so funny. <laughs> yeah, because it, I, it's, a, it's such a different experience, I feel like watching sailor moon and reading sailor moon (laughs) yeah so i feel like especially the new movies are gonna be jarring for some because look like amy kekita said i remember my friends being like sailor moon is so happy and fun and then and then i'd be like did you all read the manga because i've been crying for months which just reminds me of what celine always says because yes different levels of psychic damage and they just get worse (laughs) No, definitely. And let's talk about the namesake herself for the new movie, Sailor Moon Cosmos. I'm so excited. This is going to... So uh, this was a wildly different interpretation of Sailor Cosmos that we got in the 90s. Because technically, we never got Sailor Cosmos. No, not really. We got Chibi, but we never got Cosmos. Nope. So let's see. In my notes from Sailor Wik- Moon Wikipedia... Sailor Chibi in the manga was turned into Sailor Galaxia's Lost Star. Let's see. But, 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 I'm mixing myself up. In the anime. Okay, thank you. In the anime, Sailor Chibi was turned into Galaxia's Star Seed, but in the manga, I believe Sailor Chibi was actually Sailor Cosmos in disguise. And it's rumored or like theorized that Sailor Cosmos is Sailor Moon's final form, I believe. Yes. They like to say that, but I was like, how does that make sense? Because she gave up being a senshi when she became Neo Queen. And they even say that. There, There's some things that Naoko doesn't tie up correctly, where I'm like, see, didn't you say that? Yeah, I have a theory. I think Chibiusa messed it up. I think Chibiusa messed up the whole future by coming back. And that's why we're getting a different outcome. That would mean that there's no Neo Queen Serenity, which means there's no Chibiusa. Oh, point made. And Chibiusa, remember, whenever, like, Usagi dies, Chibiusa starts disappearing. That's true. Chibiusa, like, constantly disappears if either of them die. Which is interesting because Mamoru dies in Cosmos. <laughs> but Senya but, is right there. And then there's something wrong in the past. I need to go back. But she doesn't fade when he's dead. And I'm just like, hmm. Yeah, how does that work? That's why Mama's not her dad. Yeah. Let's talk about it. That does another thing like her mom did. And she was like, I just got myself pregnant. Thanks. But I think Sailor Cosmos is interesting because I think it's a version of Sailor Moon who lost. She mm-hmm. didn't win. She didn't save the day. She didn't save her friends. They all die. Oh. She says that. That that's why she fled the future. But how sad. Because everyone died. Ugh. Oh, God. Thank you, Amy. Oh, God. Um, but I just, but, but here's the thing. Sailor Cosmos is presented like this. Pre- triumphant, beautiful, angelic, pure white. There is something like, why would you make a character who lost and is so sad and is so downtrodden, look so like majestic and like, to me, she almost looks like, like ready to go boss form Mm -hmm. there's a lot of like discrepancy in the translations and then like between who's translating them as a fan or an official one and then like when they republicize them but there's also that whole a common theme in a lot of the localizations is that she keeps saying she's inevitable for sailor moon that one way or another despite whatever timelines she's going to be the final form But they don't really go into saying if that final form is dependent on her timeline or just like 
some dogmatic thing. There's always the galaxy cauldron. There's always chaos. There's always moon. There's always cosmos. Like they don't really elaborate beyond that. And you're left having to fill in a lot of gaps. Mm-hmm. I'd like to think she is the end all be all. If there's a win or a lose, cosmos is just inevitable. You're right. Because she has, because what, it's interesting that she has all the colors of the scouts with her too. Because before, so it is. Eternals brooch. Yeah. True, but it's more prominent here to me. Cosmos, like I said, did not make sense to me. Because, like I said, they mentioned that when she became new Queen Serenity, she gave up being a soldier. But the galaxy culture and also in the manga, like, she, Cosmos says she couldn't make the decision in the fight and stuff like that. And the thing is, at the end of the Sailor Moon manga, Sailor Moon made the decision, the correct decision. So I'm like, does that mean Cosmos isn't going to happen? Because Usagi actually made the correct decision with the Galaxy Cauldron and what's going to happen. But isn't there all... Because that means that the Galaxy Wars aren't going to happen. Oh. Ooh. Interesting. That could mean... And then, sorry, Lucero, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just wondering if... I might be mixing up characters here, but isn't like the fairy or spirit for cosmos also in the cauldron so if she's already if she's already at the source of where everything begins and ends and she's a paired inevitable oh but i might be confusing her with a different character Celine's checking her oh, oh okay guardian cosmos guardian cosmos oh interesting in which this- case i would at least my interpretation is that she we keep being led to believe that Sailor Moon is like the polar opposite to chaos and they're like always trying to balance each other out. But if she's not actually always physically in the cauldron and instead it's Guardian Cosmos in Sailor Moon's place, who we're led to believe is future Sailor Moon, that just seems like queen or no queen. So long as there's a Sailor Moon, there is a Sailor Cosmos because it's just another iteration of Moon. It's the super, the super S. The Eternal. That's just her. That's right. I just found her. Because when I did the... When I did that Sailor Moon cosplay contest, mm-hmm. the announcer was dressed as Guardian Cosmos. And the manga is... It's Guardian Cosmos who greets her. And she goes, I am Guardian Cosmos, the Holy Spirit and Guardian of the Cosmos Seed. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, this is so interesting. Because I feel like Noko could really punch... Okay, so Lucero and for our audience, I have a theory about the new movie coming out. I think we could go past stars. I think we could genuinely... I think Noko just might want to go past stars. Because if you looked, the ending of the Eternals movie is different from the manga. It is slightly different. And... I honestly genuinely think with the way that they're setting up all these characters that we could possibly get something to go beyond Sailor Moon Cosmos. I would be open to it mainly because I want to see teenage Rini and Hotaru go to high school together. I want to see them being just gals being pals and want them to be happy, just thriving in their lane, thanks full, skin clear. Just please. I know, imagine it. We could actually get a Sailor Moon sequel. We could see the rise of Neo Queen Serenity. We could see the rise of Crystal Tokyo. We could see the Scouts as like their planetary namesakes. As imagine Haruka as the leader of the army or Venus as like the overall Ami, the leader of medicine on the planet. Like we could have such cool series. That would be pretty sick. Okay. So I found okay, it. Got the book. Would you like me to read it? Because it's cos it's Guardian Cosmos. Yeah, here, I'll okay. make you a little bit. Okay. And- All right. So it's the scouts. She's realizing, like, she's running into them. So this is the end of stars. So she's running into them. <clears throat> she sees Chibiusa and Chibiusa says, I'll see you in the 30th century. Like Chibiusa is a little angel. And come on. It goes. We were all unite, all united. Our my our thoughts connected, and now we found each other again. Here comes Guardian Cosmos. She goes, "Your stars shine so brightly. It 
isn't easy to maintain your complete star form inside the cauldron. Usagi goes, the cauldron? Are we inside the cauldron? Guardian Cosmos, yes. Usagi goes, who are you? She goes, I am Guardian Cosmos, Guardian Celestial Spirit of the Cosmos Seed. And she goes, long ago, there was another shining star like you who came here in her completed star form. Mama Serenity. She held the empty shell of a small star to her breast. And indeed, that star had a radiance just as strong as yours, Sailor Moon. So she found a star inside the cauldron, and that's what Sailor Moon is. Now you have come to see me. Does that mean you wish to cast your life into the cauldron sea of beginnings and embark on a new celestial history? Or would you prefer to leave here with your current star form intact? Usagi goes, we want to keep living together and to share our lives forever. I want to keep going and build our future together. No matter how hard it gets, this is the life I want to live. And then it's flashes go on because she said something. And then she goes, Guardian Cosmos, what happened to chaos? She goes, chaos co- Chaos's core, the chaos seed, and the guardian chaos have melted in the cauldron sea and are now too small to be found. They may be reborn again one day. Because here is where stars and possibilities come to life. And that's where it ends. Like it, they wake up and she's in Mamadou's bed. Uh, Like there's something there. mm, The frustrating. That's where you get this picture because this is the next scene is after that. This is where. Ah, I remember that one. So that's the ending. So it's, I guess it alludes to the fact that chaos might come back. Mm -hmm. But Usagi made the correct decision. Um, I don't think there's anything else. It's just... And then it's her getting married to Mamoru. That's the end of the book. Interesting. Took him the whole series. At least he did it. Kudos to that guy. It's just... So it's... Could they expand upon that in the new movie? Could we actually get Sailor Cosmos talking to us? And figuring out more stuff like that? Because I'm hoping what? Because that's the thing. I'm afraid. Because you know they gotta cut things. You don't think that they would cut anything with her, do you? She's just vague enough is the issue. Like she's cool in the comic, but there's so much that we're missing in terms of information that when you do take her out of the story, it doesn't like have a big integral effect. You could still tell a story without her. But we would hope in my heart of hearts, in my itty bitty little star seed, that they would include her and they would fill in those blanks, even if it is, yeah, it would be its own canon. I don't, this is a hill I want to die on. And I want to die in her arms in this story. Yes. No, I'm totally. And then it's, it's just. There is something else that Mamadou says mm-hmm. that's interesting. And it, it goes back to that whole trapped in immortality thing. Mm-hmm. And it's Mamadou, this is at their wedding, and he's looking at Usagi with the girls. And he goes, even when we eventually fade away, and new Sailor Guardians, new stars, new planets come along, generation after generation, Sailor Moon, you will never burn out. You will be the star that shines brightest and most beautifully for all eternity. So I'm wondering if it's alluding that, oh, here's, by the way, the other Sailor The Sailor Chanel and Sailor Gucci. Yeah. But... So I'm wondering if that's alluding that everyone else is going to die and Usagi's not going to. I wonder. Which, honestly, what a horrible fate to have all your loved ones die over and over. Mm-hmm. And by the way, Loki, thank you. Loki verified when they all die. So of course, they die at least, since this is very relevant, the Senshi have died at least three times, but that includes past lives, deaths, First is the Saturn Glaive in the past, then a la barrel, and then last time is Via Galaxia. So it's not that meant. That's three. And they almost don't make it out of that one. But Usagi's, no, we want to stay like that. Yeah, and something to remember. Sailor Moon and Sailor Chibi are two different people in the anime. And no, honestly, Loki, like, I, I give. Like, immortality is a prison and death provides sweet release. And what an interesting thing that Sailor Moon doesn't get that release. Mm -hmm. Never really thought about that. And could that be what Queen Serenity was in a way? 
possibly i don't know her own immortality yeah because i don't know it, it's always so interesting with this because there's so much depth in the manga and there's such especially like the villains especially they're just like oh you were bad Psh, gone like it's not like in the 90s anime where i'm sorry I felt like I had a personal friendship with all of the villains when they were befriending the scouts, especially like the Amazon Quartet, like especially because mm-hmm. they were our age range when I was watching it, or at least it was for me. And it was just like they felt like my friends, especially. Oh, my God, though, that chant. Don't dream that you don't grow up. Big dreams are dreams. That's for kids. Mm-hmm. I listened to that chant so many times. It's stuck in my head as much as Alan's flute. Oh, but yeah, so that's just the big distinction I wanted to make. So Sailor Cosmos, version who lost. Sailor Moon and Chibi in the 90s anime, two different people. And then remember, mm-hmm. in the manga, Sailor Chibi Chibi, Sailor Galaxia Starseed. That's the differentiation, mm-hmm. I believe. I think in the anime, she's Chibi Chibi Starseed. Did... In the manga, anime. she's Cosmos. It's okay. I try. The time. Try. Reverse. That's what I meant. All right, prediction. Okay, so now we are just in general discussion and Sailor Moon Cosmos predictions. Ooh, ooh, Loki, you're trying to make me sympathetic to her. And Loki comes in because how many cycles did Mama Serenity watch of her subjects be born and die? Don't know how old she is. We just know how old she looks. I don't want to feel sorry for that woman. That's why she wanted a child. Oh, Mm. that's so true. She was lonely. That's why she goes back to the galaxy cauldron. And loneliness can make you do horrible things. Oh, sure can. That's why there's no king in the moon. Oh, because she was like, "Fuck that guy." So, and I don't need no man. I'm fine to myself. Think by you, Lizard. Did you have any other points that you wanted to bring up? Because I know you were working on it. And yeah. <laughs> oh no, just the. I think these are great points about her. Yeah, just the sheer amount of suffering she has to deal with, but it's still, like, really drives home. Every time she's knocked down, she gets back up. And even if she really wants to give up, she doesn't. And that's where all of her strength and empathy come from. It's just, it's for the other people she cares about. It's not just for herself. It's because even if she's going to have a really hard time, she wants the people she loves to still have a fighting chance. And that is such a powerful message. It's such a good, like, it warms your heart kind of message. Oh. So rarely before and since have we seen, I know the magical goal genre really tries to push like empathy being the empowering force, but this one like really hit it is you can be strong and strength looks like a lot of different things depending on who you are and your circumstances, but you having a strong like moral constitution and believing in yourself and your loved ones can be like the greatest strength. And you don't do it alone. You always do it with other people. It's just like, man, this is a very wholesome thing. Itagi tries to save Galaxia. Yeah. yeah. Bitch, she killed everybody. Let her fall. <laughs> See, but I'm with the Soggy. I'm like, I get it. She went through a lot of things. Like, maybe there is something redeemable in her. Just like that TikTok sound. He's just a guy. Hit him with your car. Yeah. Oh. Oh. The bad night. Throw her in the cauldron and see what comes out. Throw her in the cauldron. Out. Fine. Just the, that fucking Sparta. This is Sparta. <laughs> and kick her into the cauldron. Because it's what she deserves. She is a glorious golden. She's just like a shining beacon of arrogance. But in a, the best possible way as a villain. Is she really arrogant or she can back up what she says? Is that even... She's just very honest. Point made. Because she can not only talk the talk. She will beat you into the ground and smile. Yeah, is it really bragging if you follow uh, through? No, she's just, that's her five-year plan. She's just going through it. facts. Mm-hmm. She's going to get it done. Her mood board at home is insane. The woman is type it. It's immaculate, <laughs> actually. It's inspiring. No, I almost feel like genuinely Sailor Moon Cosmos feels like when Endgame came out. It's like our version of Endgame for Sailor Moon. We're all ready. We're all like, let's get going. <laughs> Lexi is type A Capricorn. Now. Oh, <laughs> it's true. As a Capricorn can confirm. She's gonna die. But yeah. That's why she wears all gold because she gets the money. <laughs> Do we have it confirmed that everybody from the manga is going to be in the ninety in the new movie? So far, because they've shown Cosmos. 
and they've shown all the anima mates. So we might get a true like whole out arc. But we have not seen co- the Cosmos Guardian, which they might not show because that is literally the last pages of the book. Literally. What I read was the last five pages of the manga. So it's gonna be so they could also they, they haven't shown whether or not we're gonna get the wedding scene at the end, mm-hmm. which is like how Sailor Moon ties up is her getting married to Mamaru. That's it. I'm like, that's it. There's also the whole like Usagi, why do you need a man? Let him go. <laughs> no, no, like, no one. She might be in it, but they could still put in that twist or go beyond, like you're saying. She might just be she might still make a cameo in a scene, but very differently. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. That's not what I meant to you know what? Brain fart. She could just be significantly different from how we see her in print. It's just like, yeah, here she is. I'm still Cosmos. But actually I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna say that, and here we are. Whole new canon. Oh my gosh. Get fucked. Mm-hmm. Just so you guys know. Just that's what we want to do. You know what I didn't see in those last couple pages? Hmm. The starlights and what happened to them. What does and the them? them? Oh my god, I forgot. What happens? Are they, they have, don't they get killed? They do get killed, but don't they get brought back? <clears throat> or, I don't know, because it doesn't show them in the final scene. It only shows the scouts. Like, out, inners and outers, that's it. Oh. It doesn't show Kaku, nothing. Oh. So that, like, rooftop scene when they're leaving in the 90s anime. Yeah, that's not... Well, do we see the asteroid sentry? Or no? I'll is Chibiusa in the angel form saying, I'll see you in the 30th century. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, there's nothing. It literally goes from, because she doesn't realize when she's meeting with the others, they're in the galaxy cauldron still. Oh. And that's why the guardian cosmos shows up because she's, hey, by the way, you're not alive right now. Technically. Oh, wait, are we going to see the depth of the oh. starlights and not bring them back? I don't know because it's not in the manga. So I don't know if we're going to get the rooftop scene where they go back home. My God. Oh, see, the only thing I can think in the print is you only have so much space on a page. There's only so many characters you can draw in to meet in the cauldron. So would that be implied that they come back then? Or are we really just what is what you get? Everybody else is just conjecture. And also they were a boy band for a month really are we splitting hairs here on this one is it really going to break the bank yes yeah loki coming in saying when eternal sailor moon destroys sailor oh my god how do you pronounce it kai kai Kai. Kai. bracelets and disappears sailor kai Kai. okay stabs sailor kaku from behind with her staff in her last words she tells usagi she wants to be reborn together even if they're still fighting kaku then passes away in usagi's arms Sailor Moon resolves to use her Sailor Crystal to the end to the war. Oh, to end the war and finishes Sailor Kai. Sailor Chibi Moon passes. Put Sailor Chibi Moon pushes Sailor Moon away from Kaku's body as Sailor Venus destroys her corpse and takes Sailor Kaku's crystal. Dang, this is gonna be a heck of a movie. Two movies, mm-hmm. like. I'm pretty sure this big fight scene is going to be the last movie. The entire fight scene. This is the one that's going to come out on Usagi's birthday. This whole big fight. I guarantee you that first movie is going to get up to the fight and then go, see you next time. I'm excited for Sailor Kaku, though. Yes. Because she uses tarot cards to fight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. So I'm really excited for that. Her transformation. She's also, they, they've great. shown her transformation. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. let me bring it up. I haven't seen it. It's on the Sailor Moon, like, the little quicks on uh, the Sailor Moon official for YouTube. Okay. Let me bring it up. They showed her transformation. Probably. I probably just missed it. Yeah. I've had a week. All right. So, Sailor Moon, Princess. Yeah. I guess I'll try. Can't wait. It comes out next week. It's gonna be good. I'm trying. Do you what account was it on? The Sailor Moon official for YouTube. Sailor Moon. There's so many accounts about Sailor Moon on YouTube. I'm trying to find it. Yeah, but it's their official account, ah. so it should say Sailor Moon official. Okay, there we go. 
found it. Let's see. Video. Sorry, guys. We almost had it. It's not showing up yet. Or it's not showing. Oh. Or here, let me show you. Which one is it? It should be in the shorts. Oh, that's why I was in the wrong place. And I think it's the one. This one? Yeah. Okay. Possibly. You're right. Um, yeah. Oh, here. Let me put the music on. I'm very excited because it's also going to do Chibi Chibi's transformation. I'm like, yes. yes. Here we go. I'm so excited. That is yeah, it looks cool. really very excited for Sailor Cock You. Mm-hmm. That's going to be amazing. And I'm so excited she fights with tarot cards. I'm so excited about that. Oh, sorry. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. All right. Aloki asking us to read this. Okay. So apparently in the Italian dub of Sailor Moon, the Sailor Starlight's the starlight sex switching was not present. Instead, they were, let's see, let me let's go switch. Instead, they were said to be the twin sisters of the three lights. This explanation was added to the Italian dub after, oh no, names. Vera slipped. a psychologist, claimed that Sailor Moon made young boys become homosexual. Oh my God. Sailor Moon made me gay. I can't wait. No, same. <laughs> Sailor Moon just helped me figure out I was gay, okay? I think oh, that, in, that in Aeon Flux had a little bit of influence somewhere in my formative years. <laughs> it was definitely when I was figuring myself out that I rewatched Sailor Moon and I'm like, oh, oh, I get it. I knew by the time I was nine. I was just in the closet for a very long like, time. The girls in my class are pretty too. <laughs> Though I will say Mulan was definitely my first woman with a sword crush. Funny how that theme works out. So funny. And then I love this comment from Sailor Denzel. The animation for Chibi Chibi transformation is a reference to Sailor Moon's first transformation in her 90s anime. Oh, oh I love this show. We still don't know where it's going to play for us with subs. Mm. There's no one out. Netflix hasn't announced shit, which sucks because when the other movie came out, when Eternal came out, it pretty much was simulcast. Yes. They haven't said shit. There might be a chance their PR team is just like really busy right now with the whole account sharing nonsense. Need to get themselves off themselves. Let it go. Oh my gosh. All right. Any other points you guys want to make? Because we're almost at time for wrap up. I genuinely. Okay. Do you guys think that the movie will be an improvement because we get these characters? Or do you think you're still going to like Sailor Moon stars better? I think I, I like Sailor Moon stars because of the nostalgia factor of seeing it younger and which is the impression left. But I'm really hopeful for the addition of the characters to just add a whole other layer. Everything you wanted to see moving. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm excited to see the manga animated. I think it's going to be interesting because I don't know about you guys, but I actually didn't watch Sailor Moon stars until I was in my 20s. Because in... It was never brought over here in America. So I was watched up until the dream arc. And I guess I just remember thinking, whatever never. happened to Haruka and Michiru? They never came back and they were really cool characters. But you know, I was like small child. So, but I just remember thinking, I always wished I felt like the series finished. So I'm very mm-hmm. interested to see if this movie is this epic knockout drag out maybe we'll even oh my god what if we got sailor moon cosmos in theaters would they would have announced it already but maybe you don't know maybe it could be late no because it comes out next week they would have announced it already to do advanced tickets like they did for the demon slayer movie because the demon slayer they movie they, they put out tickets over a month in advance for her birthday and they show the part one from the beginning of the month and then part two in a theater i'm wishing very big here but i'm gonna hold out some hope i know i'm i'm being real i don't understand why we haven't gotten anything for for the movie it doesn't make any sense yeah, and we will let you guys know. We will definitely update our accounts whenever we find out that the movie is coming out here and how we'll be able to watch it because we want to make sure that we want Toei to know we exist over here and we greatly want to see the movie. Oh, what? Oh, I like this question from De- Sailor Denzel. 
what is a moment or panel from the manga y'all are well in, are hoping to see in the movie? I could say, but I'm gonna. It's a little bit of a spoiler. But my favorite character, who now I got to double check how to pronounce one more time because I can't remember because I have the attention span of a gnat today. Is it Sailor Kai? No, because mine is, yeah, Sailor Kai. I love that panel where she is literally stabbing one of the characters all the way through. That is such whole, let me see if I can find it and make sure it's not too, let's see. She Kai fig. Dang it. Okay, so it was Sailor Fi. Sorry. Thank you. Let me see if I can find it. But I always was just, that's whenever I wa- was researching her and I was just like, oh my God. Yep. Okay, so guys, this is a spoiler of an image because this is going to be a spoiler for the movie coming out. Let me pull it up. But this was the moment I am very excited to see. Oh, yeah. Yep. Just. And not that I'm excited to see her die. Power, just fucking stab her. Yeah. Not that I'm excited to see her die, but I'm genuinely interested to see. Are we going to get. Yeah. Yeah. Like Amy just said, I. It's like a screech whenever you see this because it's, like, it's a Sailor Moon. This is the power of love and friendship in a show. What are you talking about? These are the hardships that you have to overcome with friendship. With friendship. So that's why. This is the panel in the manga. Whenever I saw it, I was just like, okay, where are we going? I don't know where we're going. And then Lynn brought in, it should be coming here, but probably not in the summer as we wanted to be due to localization stuff. It might be early fall. I don't see anything. There is no announcement of any international release at all. So, guys, Like anywhere else. It's only in Japan. We'll just have to hope and do our best. Because I just looked it up too. Thank you. There's no confirmation for any international releases anywhere. Oh. I'm like, what? I'm like, seriously? Why don't we have any international releases? We want it. All right. And then I guess it is time to wrap it up. Salim, would you like to start? Yeah, or do you guys have our double check? Anything research. else? Anything else you guys wanted to say before we wrap up? It's been great. <laughs> awesome. Give us okay. an international release date, please. Toei, we exist. Yeah. Please remember that. All right, Celine, if you want to go ahead and start. I lost my train of <laughs> Okay. And this brings us to the end of our episode. Thank you for joining us for episode 11 of season two. We'd like to thank Lusario for being here and joining us today on our, our Mooney Mayhem. As always, our fellow Moonies, make sure you follow us on all of our socials. You can find those in our link tree in the, our description. And don't forget to join us next Saturday as we do another Mooney Adventure from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern. I am Celine. You can find me on Twitch. I have not been streaming for a moment because things are stressful and a lot of shit has happened at work. And I get home and I don't want to stream, which is fair enough. You can also find me on Instagram and also Facebook. Um, with the tag Catarata, that is my cosplay name. And yeah, I post Mooney stuff on there. Oh, and you can also find me. I really need to put my TikTok oh, on here. Yeah, we need to fix this. We're going to update this for next week because we haven't ch- changed um, this since the beginning. Um, I, I'm also on TikTok. Let me look up how to say my how, how my name is because I had to put it a certain way because <laughs> it was taken. Oh, no. Um, oh, no, it's my TikTok name. I mean, my Twitch name. So okay. Celine underscore Laufeson is also on my TikTok. I post my Sailor Moon collection that you can see behind me, like more in-depth stuff. And I'm also posting trailers about my book I'm writing. Yeah, support Celine, support Celine. Yeah, and then Lucero, go ahead and feel free to plug yourself. Oh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> you guys can find me on Instagram under Lucero Cosplay. I also have, I forgot to mention this earlier, but here we are. I have a sewing blog. There's cosplay and stuff on there. It's called LucetoSewingCorner.com. It's very small, but you can find me there or through my link tree. So, yeah. Anything yeah. coming up that I have? Not really, but there will be things eventually. Just not off the top of my head right now. <laughs> no, and thank you for coming. And thank you for coming in cosplay. You look absolutely awesome. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys so much. This, so this was like such a delight. Just so everybody knows, this is like really very fun. So thank you guys so much for having me. This was really made my week. 
for my weekend. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad. Oh, and to plug that for you. There you go. If you guys want to find so much. Thank you, Bookie. All right. And as always, I have been your host, Michi. You can find my personal socials at mew21 underscore cosplay. For Eternal Mooncast, you can find older episodes of our show wherever you listen to podcasts. Season one is complete and available now. We appreciate any likes, comments, follows, or however you would like to support our show in our in your own way. As a quick reminder, these have all just been our personal opinions. I almost I lost my place. You're fine. As a quick reminder, these have all just been our personal opinions, and we celebrate and respect all Mooney opinions here. We are working hard on the show to be a place for Moonies to come together to discuss their theories for their love and passion for Sailor Moon. And then before we close out tonight, there is one more thing we wanted to talk about. We had a loss here in the Eternal Mooncast family. My cat Comet, who you guys might have seen in the background, has passed away. And he was one of my biggest supporters for starting the show. And tonight's episode is in his honor. So everybody send good wishes to Comet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, and then just to close out the night, since Sailor Jupiter is Lucera's favorite character, remember, as Sailor Jupiter said, let's protect the peace and have some cake after this. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs>